Whether your roads are dirt, paved, or if you're blazing new trails, the roads we travel lead to all of our most cherished places and people. Bravado Wireless strives to keep you connected wherever the roads may take you. We are the leader in wireless mobility and connection in Oklahoma and across the nation. We carry some of the market's top cell phone brands, fast, reliable home internet, and even greater customer service. Locally owned and operated right here in eastern Oklahoma. So whatever roads you travel, Bravado Wireless has them covered. From beginning to end. We are Bravado Wireless, and we believe in the power of connection. At Bravado Wireless, we don't believe in wasting your time or ours. Our mission is to serve you with honesty and integrity. That's why we offer upfront competitive pricing with no hidden fees in our plans. For $40 a month, you get unlimited talk, text, and data with nationwide coverage. No data caps and no restrictions. No matter if it's your first, second, or third line, you only pay $40 per month per line. All of that with coverage on America's best network. We're your local service provider. Come get to know us. Go bold. Go bravado. Cats and the Stigler Panthers. I'm Seth Campbell. That's Curtis Branch. And well, we've got a fantastic game here in the District 3A3. Curtis, we've seen some athletes on both of these sides of this field. But really, the guy that stands out is the new Iowa State commit in Dontier Fisher. Or not commit, sorry. New Iowa State offer in Dontier yeah. Fisher. Big news this week. Dontier Fisher uh, picked up an offer from Iowa State based on uh, performance earlier this year. He's got to be excited. Be, uh, he seemed like he had a little juice in the legs this uh, in warm-ups before the game, so excited to see him get out on the field and show why he's a Big 12 or, uh, offer. Yes, and we've seen Dontier Fisher in action if you follow the Bravado Wireless game of the week. Two weeks prior, we watched Dakota play Ufala, and he is a big play waiting to happen. He is. He uh, made two of the most exciting runs we've seen this year. Uh, really was trapped. Makes Made something out of nothing twice, and uh, both times they needed it. They're going to need all of him tonight that they can get and uh, and more to really compete with Stigler, who's got a high-powered offense coming in here tonight. He's like a firecracker. He can go off at any time, and trying to stop and put out those fireworks will be Bruce Engel, linebacker, tight end, really do it all for Stigler. Yeah, he's the, he's the difference maker. As we saw against Ufala, Ufala had a, a great linebacker in the middle, and the Ingles, the same uh, same cut of cloth. He, he is sideline-to-sideline, uh, uh, sideline, full speed, and uh, he's their leading tackler. Had 134 tackles and three interceptions last year. Leads this Stigler defense in district play tonight. And Coach Chris Reisenhoover of the Stigler Panthers said that it's going to be a key as you just got to make sure that Fisher doesn't get ahead of steam. Keep him at the line of scrimmage because once he gets going, like we mentioned multiple times already, he's gone. Yeah, if he gets to the second level and can make a guy miss, he's got breakaway speed. Uh, and, you know, Coach Ryzen Hoover is really concerned about that, bringing a lot of bodies at him, trying to tackle him. And, and so what we got to see tonight is really how, how much Dakota opens up the offense to the other guys and gives him some help so that he can have that breakaway. We saw that a little bit at times against Ufala. They're going to need a lot more of that tonight. Yeah, some of that help will be Malachi Harris and Trenton Dan, both guys that were semi-involved and have been semi-involved in this offense for a while now. But you can utilize them and almost use Fisher as a decoy a lot to get the ball to those guys. Yeah, they got to be playmakers on the outside, though. They've got to be a difference maker. they got to stretch the field, get some guys out of the box, get the safeties back off the line of scrimmage, and or use play action to get them in one-on-one -on -one situations and create separation to make big plays on the outside. But for Stigler, we mentioned the fact that Bruce Engel is an important key, but it can't just be Bruce Engel trying to bring down Fisher. You've got to have a host of guys all around him at all times and then also being prepared for the play action. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, Coach Rising never talked a little bit in the pregame about the size of the uh, Shakota's offensive line. They've got to get a good push. They've got to get off the first block or the first block and get to the second level to create opportunities. Likewise, Stigler has to do a good job of getting off those blocks with the size that Shakota has and uh, really game tackle well tonight. And then how important is it, Curtis, to get off to a 2-0 start in district play as both of these teams are really chasing defending district champion Lincoln Christian? 
Yeah, uh, this is a loaded district. It's one of the most talented uh, in any class in the state of Oklahoma. It's very balanced. Uh, Shakota has aspirations to be district champs. they got to win this game. Uh, in order to do that, you have to hold serve on your court. And then Stickler uh, ranked sixth in uh, Class 3A and, and uh, arguably uh, ranked at number 11 by Max Preps, I think, this week. Uh, they, they've got aspirations, and they, they feel like they've got the talent. They made a deep run in the playoffs last year. They want to be district champs. They can't lose this game. Yeah, after getting bounced in the second round to the team that eventually was the runner-up in the Class 3A playoffs. They feel like they have the team that can make the jump this year with nine returning starters back on the offensive side of the ball. But we have a beautiful night here in Shakota, right off of Interstate 40. The sun is setting. We're at 61 degrees. A breeze kind of blowing in our faces here, Curtis. It feels like fall in football weather. Oh, it's a beautiful night. We're excited to see it. Uh, they just finished up senior uh, night festivities, and uh, we're ready for some football about 15 minutes away. Yeah, and one of the weird things throughout this COVID season, this is not Shakota's last home game, but they're trying to get senior night festivities in just in case you never know when it might be your last home game here during uh, 2020 in the COVID-19 marred season. Yeah, we saw two, uh, three really big district games canceled this week in uh, Class 5A and 6A, which leads to a really interesting matchup across the state between uh, 6A number, uh, 6A2 number one Bixby and 5A number one Carl Albert. So we'll be watching that game for sure as well. And it has affected all levels of football. If you go all the way to the top, the Tennessee Titans aren't playing this week as well. All right, well, We'll be right back here on the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. We're going to send it to commercial, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, Curtis is going to give his keys to the game. Right now, more than ever, we're choosing to take the back roads and stay off of the beaten path. We're doing all that we can to avoid the crowds and the hustle of the city. While we know that taking the road less traveled isn't for everyone, it's where we feel most at home. Every turn down this road could be challenging, and much like you, we know the harder the challenge, the greater the reward. That's why each and every day, Bravado Wireless is growing our network further down the county roads and down the roads less traveled. We're making sure wherever your road may lead, you're always connected. We are Bravado Wireless, Oklahoma's own wireless provider. Planning a weekend away in your camper? Take your Bravado Wireless home internet with you. Right now, our most popular internet plan has been chopped. While other internet providers are stuck at home with all of those wires and your obnoxious neighbor, Hank. You are free to take your wireless router to your home away from home. Visit us at bravadowireless.com to find a store near you. We are Bravado Wireless, and we believe in the power of connection. Welcome back into the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. This game, as we've mentioned, is brought to you by Bravado Wireless. If you need help in eastern Oklahoma with wireless connection, make sure to check out our friends at Bravado. They are your local partner in the wireless game. They'll get you hooked up with cell phone coverage. They'll get you hooked up with internet. Whatever you need, go visit your local Bravado Wireless. Or if you don't want to go in store because COVID-19 is still a thing, you can also call our good friends at Bravado, and they will be more than happy to help you over the phone. All right, we're coming back up now, and we're going to talk to Curtis Branch about his Curtis's keys to the game. We'll start with the visiting Stigler Panthers. What do the Panthers have to do to leave Shakota 2-0 in district, Curtis? Well, continue doing what they're doing. Be balanced is uh, key number one. They are averaging uh, 212 yards passing, 218 yards rushing per game. 
Uh, Coach Ross said that uh, they show very few tendencies. Uh, they're going to give you multiple looks, multiple formations, and they're going to be very, very balanced. And so for them to be successful offensively, that's a huge key for them. I think secondly, they, they uh, incorporate a very unique situation. They have a two-headed monster, a quarterback. Um, both are very balanced. They use them sometimes every other play. They bring in the play. Sometimes they use, switch them each series. Coach Reisenhoover said that uh, Darren Maines and Zane Oldham are both uh, – quality uh, players are very comparable and I thought the most interesting comment he made before the game was with COVID you never know when one of them is going to be out when, you, when you're when you one short so playing them each game and giving them success uh, and uh, balance in their, uh, their playing time is very important for him and throughout the entirety of the season and I think uh, most importantly for them tonight uh, with who they face uh, is the man in the middle uh, five top 100 player Bruce Engel he's a middle linebacker he anchors their defense uh, he's been a little nicked up we'll see how effective he is tonight but uh, he is the key to stopping Mr. Fisher. Curtis going to the offense obviously it hasn't affected Stigler this year they're 4-0 on the year 1-0 in district but is it hard as a receiver or maybe just a guy on the offensive line to have to rotate quarterbacks maybe even every single play? Uh, it doesn't appear to be with uh, what they're doing. I, I think uh, it's how you coach them up and it's it's how much em- em- emphasis you put on it. If you make it out to be a big deal as a coach, I think it's a big deal. If you make it out to be its routine, I think it's a routine thing. And so uh, it's not like they're under center and, and both kids throw the ball pretty well. We watch them in warm-ups. They can both zing it. they got uh, similar arm strength and they throw the ball with good velocity and and pretty accurate, and uh, you know, uh, Maines is a little better runner, uh, according to Coach Ryzen Hoover. But uh, there's not really any tendencies to separate the two. So I think as a coach, uh, if that's if that's your strategy, you make it as normal for your team as possible, and I think it minimizes any issues that you might see otherwise. And then for the home team, Shakota Wildcats, what do they have to do to really surprise District Three and Three A here and come out leaving Shakota two and zero? Uh, well, it starts with Mr. Fisher. I think key number one is Mr. Fisher. How can they get him uh, get him going? We, we, he definitely has game-breaking speed. He's got a great playmaking ability. Uh, but you follow when we saw him a couple of weeks ago, did a good job of keeping him hemmed in. And what allowed him to break free in the second half for a second big play was, uh, was them loosening up the defense. So Mr. Fisher is their key. He, they're going to go as he goes. He's got to be excited. First D1 offer this week and uh, coming from a Big 12 team. And so uh, I, I look, expect a big night from him. And, and uh, how well he plays is really going to dictate their success tonight. And then uh, for the Shakota defense, they have a big, big task trying to slow down the air raid. Yeah, absolutely. The air raid is, I think, key number two is that uh, – you're looking at one of the best offenses and probably the best offense in this district, uh, the most balanced offense in the district. They've got to find ways to make plays, make uh, make Stigler uncomfortable, and uh, force some turnovers and get them off rhythm. And then I think lastly, talking to Coach Ross, we saw this against Ufala. They make big play, make big play. They were moving the ball, and they could not sustain drives. I think that's been a point of emphasis for them this week. I think it will be a big key for them uh, tonight, uh, keeping the offense of uh, Stigler off the field and uh, maintaining drives and run a clock tonight will be a big key to their success. And a big key to sustaining drive is not shooting yourself in the foot. No penalties for the Shakota Wildcats that really will become unnecessary, especially before the ball snap. Yeah, they've got a line that if they'll trust, they're, they're one of the biggest lines we've seen this year. They had a size advantage against Ufala, and, and uh, really they've got to be successful tonight to help maintain those drives and not make pre-snap penalties. Well, the Shakota band is on the field, and we're just about set from senior night here at Shakota, Oklahoma, to get underway between the Shakota Wildcats and the Stigler Panthers. Well, we're going to send it to break, but when we come back, we'll have the coin toss, and we'll get underway in Shakota.
are called to be bold, you have a right to the best wireless service, high-speed internet, and customer service at a price you can feel good about. At Bravado Wireless, we know this, and that's why we put you and your community first. We are owned and operated right here in eastern Oklahoma. We live where you live. We proudly connect you to your family, friends, and business partners wherever they are. Dallas, Seattle, Taipei, Toronto, and anywhere else in the world. We are Bravado Wireless. We believe in the power of connection. When you reach for that deal sealing handshake, you don't want to pass germs. Ew. So keep everyone safe by washing your hands for 20 seconds and still seal the deal. Yeah. Fist bumps now accepted as deal sealers at your local Bravado Wireless store.
Welcome back into Shakota, Oklahoma. The band is wrapping things up on the field, about to form the spirit line. Two teams are going to their respective huddles. And Curtis, I was talking to you a little bit about this earlier. The Both of these teams have brought blow-ups to come out of, right? The I, I, I don't really know how another word to describe those besides blow-ups that the teams corral in before they leave. Shakota's is spitting smoke. Um, it's either on fire or they're on fire ready to go, I think. I, I remember back, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that I was in high school and we ran through a piece of paper. Yeah, things have gotten a little out of hand with the blow-ups. Uh, you know, I used to only see them at home, but uh, Stigler brought a very large panther helmet uh, that they're going to really open the face mask up and run through as well. Yeah, see, so there's the Shakota one. You can see the smoke coming from the sides there. It's actually coming out of the wildcat that is on top of that. Uh, it's kind of crazy to me. I, I don't know. Um, why did I decide to get stuck on blow-ups here at the opening of this pregame? I don't know, Curtis, but that is what we are talking about because, honestly... There we go. That's a yeah, good view there, of it there, right there. That is a fantastic view. It might be the best one I've seen. It, you know, that could be some Carrie Underwood money coming yeah. for Shakota. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> no doubt the Wildcat is uh, perched up there ready to go. And then you see on the other side, Stigler. I, I just want to know like, if Ufala decided to bring their blow up, you know, with the big rivalry between Shakota and Ufala, would Shakota let them use their electricity to blow it up, or would they make them bring their own? <laughs> Oh, I, yeah. Probably see a crossbow come out and fire a, an arrow into the side of it and let it down. Pet pettiness at its heightest right there. Well, the cheerleaders, they have pink pom-poms. And a decent reminder to let you know that it is October. October, what is today? October the 2nd? It is indeed October the 2nd here in Shakota, Oklahoma. And you see captains on the field for the handshakes. Captain for Shakota, Clancy Campbell. And... The man stepping out is Lakin Bass for the Stigler Panthers. COVID protocols have limited how many captains can be out there. That's why you only see one guy at the coin toss. White hat for today. The head official will be Mitch Dennis. Dennis on the left explaining the rules of the coin toss, I guess, to these guys. Seems pretty self-explanatory to me. Clock has hit zeros, and we are just waiting for football. Band's playing, though, and as we mentioned a little bit earlier, Curtis, it really does feel like football weather. Yeah, it's uh, field's turning a little yellow. The, the uh, Bermuda's going dormant, and uh, got a cool breeze tonight. It'll be a nice evening for football for as a player and as a fan. Enjoy it. Looks like Shakota's going to get the ball first. Yep, Shakota won the toss. They've elected to receive, and that'll be a good job for them because they need to set the tone in this game. Absolutely. You want If you're Shakota, you want to come out, get points on the board first drive, set a tone that we're in this game to play, we're in this game to win, and, uh, and then uh, really try to make Stickler play from behind. Sun is just about gone, which is actually a key in this game if – this was played earlier in the year. If you're facing to the right on our camera, if that was early, a little bit earlier today, it's hard to see looking that way. Yeah. Looking west down Interstate 40. It's uh, one of the few fields in the state that run east to west. Uh, a couple of others, notable surprise uh, or of note, uh, is uh, Stillwater's field runs east to west, and uh, my alma mater, Cleveland Tigers, their field runs east to west as well. So it's not common. You see most fields uh, in the state run north to south because of the sun, and uh, this is one of the unique uh, settings in uh, high school football. So when we really talk about Dante Air Fisher needing to run east or north and south. As you see Shakota come onto the field, we're really talking about he needs to run east and west. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Which he's done several times on this field. Yes. Yes. He's run for many a yards. You see Shakota come onto the field. <laughs> their blow up gets deflated. And then on the other side, Stigler with their band about to come out of the face mask of the Stigler Panther blow up. A key to watch out for in this game as well is the fact that Stigler, if they need him, they have Enrique Juarez. is a proven kicker. He's a senior for them. And according to Vite and their head coach, he's got about 40-yard range. And we'll have to see if that plays out in a game. But that's a nice weapon to have in high school football. 
Yeah, absolutely. The uh, really excited to see Stigler's offense tonight. Heard a lot about them. They uh, uh, scored 44 against you, uh, following a big win, a uh, non-district play. Uh, the week before they played, uh, we saw them against uh, Shakota here. If you look at the 3A District 3 standings through one game, you've got four teams sitting at 1-0, and four teams at 0-1. At the top of the conference are Leaking Christian, Shakota, Locust Grove, and Stigler. At the end of the night, we will go from four teams that are undefeated in conference to two because Lincoln Christian plays Locust Grove and Shakota plays Stigler tonight. At the bottom of the conference, sitting at 0-1, is Seminole, Westville, Webster, and Sequoia. Should be a good night. District 3A3 action. And we're just about set to get underway. Enrique Juarez is going to kick off for the Stigler Panthers. Dontier Fisher back deep for Shakota. As well, it looks like Connor Collins. Foot meets pigskin, and we are underway. Collins and Fisher are going to run into each other at the 10 yard line. Fisher's going to take that one. Puts his foot in the ground, gets east and west, and gets about to the 25 yard line where the Panthers, pardon me, where the Wildcats will start off their first drive. Too many cats in this game. Yeah, Morgan, uh, Morgan. Jones with the tackle there to uh, uh, start the game. And uh, we've got, uh, looks like Vernon under center and uh, Fisher split out to his right. Jake Vernon, the Ufala transfer, who started against his former team two, day, two games ago, came out with the loss, but he is the signal caller for Shakota. Give Fisher gets north and south, picks up about four, but it'll be a flag on the play at the line of scrimmage. I bet this one's coming back. Yeah, Fisher did a good job bouncing it outside right there. Didn't St see what number it was on the holding call. But it is a holding against Shakota as we're going to take another look. And oh, right there on the corner, the right tackle number 75, Five. Omarion Warrior. And Warrior is a guy that is a veteran player and is really trusted outside that right tackle. But that time he just got beat by the defensive end. Yeah, trying to help his teammate out and got caught. Low snap, they're going to throw a screen pass complete out to Collins. Collins shakes a tackler, gets to the boundary. Collins picks up nice yardage around 15 yards and brings up second down and short. That time, good job of faking Dontier Fisher and getting it out to Connor Collins. Yeah, I think that was uh, Malachi Harris with catch. I think Collins was blocking for him. So Malachi Harris made a guy miss. He's a guy that we talked about helping Fisher uh, uh, loosen the defense up a little bit. Made a good play there on the on the screen. Give Fisher running right. There is a bunch of red hats around him there. Ball's on the ground. Ball came loose. If Fisher lost it, this is going to be a huge play for Stigler. Waiting for the white hat, and he does give the ball to, to Stigler. Fisher hit as he was going to the ground. Stigler comes away with it. We'll have to take another look at that. That's a huge play by the Stigler defense early in this game. Yeah, Vance uh, Hamlin with a recovery right there. Fisher just put his head down, was uh, determined to run over the cornerback, and in the in the collision, uh, lost the football. That's Good tough call. to tell. Ball spotted on the Shakota 32. We're going to take one more look at it, slow it down, as Stigler comes to the line of scrimmage. And that ball is definitely out, causing the fumble for Stigler was Morgan Jones. Stigler run up the middle. Not a whole lot doing for the running back that time. He'll pick up about three. Yeah, Ridge McClary on the carry. Uh, had 1,149 yards and 15 touchdowns last year. He's uh, the best running back uh, coming back from Stigler. He's a uh, really good playmaker out of the backfield. We talked about... In the open, the Stigler offense will run two quarterbacks out on the field. Starting this game for the Panthers will be Zane Oldham, the senior. And he has got McClary to his right. Man in motion is Braden Drury. They're going to run a double pass with Drury. He's looking, throws it, balls up in the air, and it is 
inner, nope, dropped right at the 10 yard line. That was a floating duck and almost intercepted in the back, in the secondary. Yeah, use jet sweep action, uh, try to find uh, uh, Lake and Jones, uh, the, or Lake and Bass, excuse me, in the uh, backfield. Had him open, but he uh, got stretched out by the defense and uh, underthrew him there. He had him open for a big play. When you're hit as you throw it and the ball is just fluttering like a duck up in the air and it falls incomplete, that's a sigh of relief for head coach Chris Eisenhower. Oldham still in the game, third and seven. The Panthers have got to get it to the 23-yard line. It's going to be a timeout for the Panthers, an early timeout with 10-15 left to go in the first quarter. Third and seven upcoming, and Stigler is going to talk about it a little bit longer. Zero to zero is our score, 10-15 left to go. You're on the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. A weekend away in your camper, take your Bravado Wireless home internet with you. Right now, our most popular internet plan has been chopped. While other internet providers are stuck at home with all of those wires and your obnoxious neighbor, Hank, you are free to take your wireless router to your home away from home. Visit us at bravadowireless.com to find a store near you. We are Bravado Wireless, and we believe in the power of connection. Big third and seven upcoming for Stigler. Their offense is Tried to make a big play happen with the trick play, but what do you come back to here on third and seven, Curtis? Uh, I think you probably see a pass play right here. Uh, we've got trips to the, uh, the field side, and you've got uh, maybe a man-to-man matchup here with Bass on the uh, boundary. Oldham looks right, throws boundary complete at the sticks, but he's going to be slung around, still not down. Finally brought down is Braden Drury. Drury with the catch. He was right around the sticks, but after being slung around, well, he lost about like four yards after catching the ball. Gain of one brings up fourth down, and Stigler's in no man's land with the ball placed on the 29-yard line. Yeah, this is definitely four-down territory right here. Drury uh, uh, had a nice catch on a quick out and uh, made a guy miss and then retreated and uh, lost ground after uh, avoiding the first tackler. This would be a big stand right here for Shakota if they can uh, – get him uh, off the field right here after a turnover uh, on their first drive. Shakota started the game with the ball, fumbled by Dante Air Fisher, but Stigler into good field position. Fourth down upcoming. Setting up a screen play to the left. Oldham looking left the entire time. Throws it in zone. Out of the back of the end zone. Waiting on an official call. They're going to say touchdown. Touchdown to Braden Drury in the back of the end zone. Head coach Chris Reisenhoover says, first down, how about touchdown for the Panthers? Yeah, it uh, took a lot of time uh, to make that play to develop, but uh, Oldham found Drury on the back of the end zone on a post route and uh, looked like about a 30-yard completion for a touchdown right there. Right in the back of the end zone, Drury did a fantastic job of catching that ball, making sure he maintained possession all the way through to the ground, but also getting his feet in. Yeah, and uh, Oldham showed a lot of patience. He could have run for the uh, first down there. He had uh, plenty of uh, green dirt in front of him there and uh, had a chance to pick up uh, 10, 15 yards and uh, showed good patience and uh, trust in his receiver there. He, he steps up in the pocket close to the line of scrimmage, and that's a ball on a line right in the back of the end zone. That's close. Yeah, that's very close. Great catch. Looked like clean catch. I'm not sure his feet were inbounds when he uh, when he had possession of it. And that's that bang bang play that if we were at a, the next level would get looked at again. But here at high in the high school level, I think those officials are going to more often than not reward a good catch when it's close like that. Absolutely. If you're the Shakota Wildcats, though, couldn't have a plan for really a worse start. How do you get back on the field and slow the momentum down of the Stigler? Well, you just got to go back at it, and you got to sustain the drive. I mean, uh, Coach Ross talked about that pregame, and they got to have the discipline to uh, sustain drives, and they've got to uh, run and, uh, you know, got to be dependent upon Fisher to some degree. Yeah, Fisher, it's not the start that he wanted either, either fumbling the ball on the first possession. Most of the time, once you get a D1 offer from a high Division One school in the Power Five, like Fisher did this week with his Iowa State offer, a lot of offers start trickling in because all of a sudden that that guy hits a lot of other schools' radars. If you're trying to impress those other schools, that's not necessarily the best way to do it right there. No, 
Oh, he'll he'll do his best to make up for it this series. Good kick right there. Kick hits at the two, rolls into the end zone over the head of the return man, Connor Collins. Dakota will take over at the 20-yard line. We mentioned some of the the weapons surrounding Dante Air Fisher and Malachi Harris, the guy that's already gotten a reception today, and Trenton Danner. Some guys that are going to need to get going for the Wildcats as well if they want to stay in this game. Yeah, I haven't seen Trenton Dan out there yet. See on the far side there. It's hard to tell. He's a little ways away. Dante Air Fisher give. Spin move at the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up positive yards. They'll give Fisher three. He brings up second and seven. Good run there by Fisher. Nice spin move to get him get an extra yard or two and avoid a tackler at the backfield or the line of scrimmage. It's only been four plays, but it does look like the Shakota Wildcats offensive line is getting a decent push against Stigler. Well, they got him outsized. They got a they got a out technique in here. There is Trenton Dan on a slant route right over the middle of the field, about a yard short of the first down. Brings up third and one, but that's how you do utilize those weapons, getting Dan on that slant. Yeah, I got the linebackers coming up off the play action uh, to Fisher and uh, found Dan on a nice uh, slant route there, uh, close to a first down. Third and one from the Shakota Wildcats, 29. Everybody in the park knows that this ball is going to Fisher. Let's see if the Wildcats can pick it up. They fake it to Fisher, ball on the ground with Vernon. Falls forward. It's going to depend on the spot. That was almost a disaster for the Wildcats, but Vernon shows a cool head and does pick up the first down. Yeah, good job right there. It looked like he uh, was play action, was going to boot it, and uh, kind of lost his footing and then just did a good job of tucking it and being tough and getting upfield and getting the first down. That's what I get for trying to be Tony Romo and predicting plays. They were going to fool me. <laughs> Fisher is beside Vernon in the gun. Stigler jumps off sides with the hard count, a free five yards for the Wildcats. They'll take it. Shakota moves up to the 35-yard line. That's just the kind of play that Coach Ross was talking about uh, in pregame was that you got to sustain drives. Big-time play by the quarterback to get a first down, and then they get five free yards with a hard count right here. 11 personnel for Shakota. Vernon drops back to pass, throws it deep. He's got a man, but overshoots everybody. Intended target was number 11, Malachi Harris. Have to change our roster here really quick. Harris wearing number 11 for today's game. Defended on the play by Morgan Jones, but Jones didn't have to do much defending as Vernon just overshot Harris that time. No, he did a good job of getting on top of him, though, and not letting him run past him. I think Harris has got... Really good speed from what we've seen, but uh, did a good job of getting on top of him, keeping him uh, staying in front of the football. Second down, five to go. Fisher up the middle with room. Fisher bounces it to the gone. outside. Fisher showing speed, has the corner. Fisher to the house. Touchdown, Wildcats. Big play, Dante Fisher comes up once again, and we're an extra point away from this one being tied. Wow, what a play. Bounce cut, a uh, 59-yard touchdown run, and uh, uh, even to score right here quickly, uh, make, up, make amends for that uh, turnover on the first possession. Stigler had the edge on him. They had it, and he just outran them. Well, he froze the defender, bounce cut him, and then just uh, won the race to the edge and uh, tied the line the sidelines and uh, did a great job of maintaining balance and staying in bounds to Sna get it to the end zone. Snap is down. The kick is up. Does it have the distance? No good. Misses wide left, and Shakota had trouble in the kicking game last time that we were here. They are down 7-6, to six, but what an impressive feat by Dante Air Fisher. The, Shakota, the Stigler has the angle there on the edge, and Fisher just outruns everybody to the end zone. As we take another look from the sideline cam, brought to you by Bravado Wireless. Right there, missed tackle. I mean, no shot for Grayson Gilmore. And that's why that kid's getting recruited by Iowa State. Dante Air Fisher, electric. Man, he is, uh, we've seen him for five quarters, and he's made three of the most electric runs we've seen all year. I mean, he is, he is dangerous when he gets to the edge. 
But hats off to the Shakota offensive line as well. He's getting two, three yards up the field before even being pressured by Stigler. And if you can give a guy like Fisher some space, he can make play, plays like that happen. Absolutely. Great, great job by him. A great job by the offensive line right there to give him uh, give him some running room. Looks like we may have a little pooch kick here for Shakota. Kicks high in the air. Going to be fair caught at the 40-yard line. Lake and Bass makes the fair catch. I feel like you might be better served trying to kick that one on the ground if you're trying to catch Stigler off balance. You know, my theory on onside kicks, I always, when we practiced them and worked on them, and when we did them, we had the kid, uh, the old dinosaur straight on kick and would kick it at the, at the uh, least athletic person on the front line and just try to kick a hard knuckleball at him and like dodgeball. <laughs> and it's amazing how often that thing ricocheted off and made plays. Into the game at quarterback, Darren Maines. Maines keeps right side. Maines with a hole. Maines first down yardage to the 46 yard line of the Wildcats. Head coach Chris Reisenhoover said that Maines is the running quarterback and he showed it there. Boy, good. Good job. Made a great cut right up there to get upfield. Good blocking on the perimeter. Just Big gain of 12 there to start his first drive. Just split game. two defenders right there in the line of scrimmage. Was right foot in the ground, got north and south real quick. Yeah. Showed a lot of versatility here so far in the Stigler offense. Maines this time is going to give it. Running to the left side, near side, is the running back Ridge McClary. McClary's going to be brought down late, and that's going to be a flag. Maybe, Possibly a horse collar? Yeah, maybe around face the face or horse collar area. They're going to wave the flag off, so no flag on the play. Clancy Campbell, the senior for Shakota, came out with the tackle. Positive yards, second down and five for Stigler. Stigler's got good speed. Uh, with their athletes here. Once again, McClary's in the backfield with Maines. This time, Maines set to throw. Screen route underneath. Brought down hard that time was the receiver, Braden Drury. Once again, Clancy Campbell on the stop. Boy, we've seen early. They have uh, gone multiple formations. They've given you several different looks. Uh, you know, a screen. They've gone... Uh, play action they've uh, gone counter they've gone uh, power they've gone um, yeah. deep I mean they've, they've you can't a expect lot of versatility the, the same thing twice Maines keeps it right hash Maines first down and more Maines still on his feet past the 30 yard line balls on the ground Shakota comes away with it uh oh there's a pile at the 45 yard line finally somebody comes down the ball comes out again this time they're going to say that the ball carrier was down and Shakota comes away with it. That's a huge play for Shakota. They come up with a turnover of them of their own. Get the ball back. We got a like man Malachi down. Malachi Harris is down. He must have been the guy that made the play. Take another look here. Great job by Maines yeah, of running popped it. popped up as he was going down it right just, into Harris's hands. Right. I mean, you can't ask for a better job than that. And then man, Harris has stood up right here. Right at the end, he is getting treatment right in front of the Stigler bench. He comes up and will walk off on his own power, but that's a huge momentum play in favor of Shakota. That ball just pops up. and I mean, you can't ask for it any better right in the hands. Yeah, it kind of looks like he may have been down there with that angle. We've uh, seen a couple of angles, and uh, that one looked more clear that maybe he was down. It was a uh, late fumble, but Shakota is definitely not going to complain, especially after that. 50-50 call that went Stigler's way for their touchdown in the back of the end zone. Yeah. Ball spotted just inside of Wildcat territory. Vernon in well, the gun. We got, got, we got a guy out here uncovered. They need to call timeout or they're going to be in trouble. Stigler doesn't have enough defenders on the field. They had uh, two receivers to the near side that were wide open, uncovered and uh, couldn't get the ball snapped. They throw it out here. It's a touchdown. Really weird, though, is because Shakota had somebody running on late as well, and Matt Clover 
5.36 left to go in the first quarter. Seeing offenses be just a little bit sloppy here early, Curtis. Yeah, good hard-hitting game. Uh, ball protection is uh, going to be uh, emphasized throughout. You want to want to protect the ball, especially in a big district game, and uh, not give the other team momentum. Shown the electric running of Dontier Fisher. Stigler shown their power, spreading the ball out and being multiple. Let's take another look at the replay with Malachi Harris coming out of there with it. And then he's going to be held up right here. Comes away a little injured. But I believe he's back on the field for Shakota, which is good news for Shakota. Vernon back there by himself, rolling right, throws on the run, underthrown in between the hands of the Stigler cornerback, Lakin Bass. Intended target was Riley Campbell. There is a flag on the play. Vernon had the right idea, just not enough arm strength on that one. Campbell was behind the defense. Yeah, if he broke the pocket a little bit quicker, I think he saw him. But Campbell actually came back to the ball, and uh, hard to throw it that far on the run when he had him uh, had him deep. But uh, reason he got out of the side of the pocket looked like with a hole. Second penalty of the day against Shakota backs him up ten. That's their second penalty for twenty yards. They're gonna back. They're gonna back Shakota up 22 yards, or pardon me, 12 yards. Fisher in motion, give jet sweep. Fisher, not a lot doing there. Bunch that's of red hats. Trent Dan. Or pardon me, that's Trenton Dan. You're exactly right. Dan was in the motion that time. I think that's a play that sets up a play later. Um, Notice Fisher's actions right there. But good play to fake that and run option against the uh, flow later on. Second down and 22 upcoming for the Wildcats. They're in minus territory for the second time this game. We talked about earlier that the Wildcats don't need to shoot themselves in the foot, but they've done that early on offense. Vernon in the gun. Give Dontier Fisher running right. Fisher cuts it up. Fisher up the middle. Fisher, nobody is going to touch him. Fisher, 20 yards of space, walks into the end zone. Wildcats lead. Wow, great cut back there. Had him on a zone play to the outside. He bounced back up in the middle. Uh, linebacker didn't fill, uh, fill the gap, and he was gone. As soon as he broke the line of scrimmage, you could see that a mile away. Dante Air Fisher just needed to get to the second level untouched. And then he was going to make sure that nobody dressed in red and white was going to touch him. Yeah, well, it's the first uh, struggle that probably uh, uh, Stigler has seen this year. We'll see how they respond to this uh, first sign of adversity. They've led every game and uh, won comfortably every game. So first time they trailed this season. Extra point is up and good. Dante Fisher just that cut back right there at the line of scrimmage. Once he gets into the open field, there's nobody dressed in red going to catch him. He yeah. has 20 yards between him and the nearest defender. Yeah, he saw Engel right there. Engel gets a uh, trap block right there by number 65 and uh, overflow runs the play there. Uh, Engel's a little hobbled up, and uh, you can see he doesn't have the mobility that uh, probably wants to have tonight. Uh, they were a little concerned about his ability to go and uh, just wasn't able to uh, uh, fight off the block and uh, get downfield in good position to fill the gap. Yeah, that's something we forgot to mention, Curtis, is Bryce Bruce Engel, the Vipe All-3A player with 55 tackles coming into the game, did not practice all week for Stigler. It was one of those things that Chris Reisenhoover said that they're just going to let him rest all week, not practice him. They really didn't even want him to jog. And then when it came game time, they're going to see how it was. And if he was, if he was able to run, they were going to put him out there. And so far, he's been out there. I don't know if he's full speed, though. Didn't look full speed right there. Must, might have some uh, struggle with his. Uh... The kick taken at the 30 by... Number seven, looks like Grayson, Grayson uh, Gilmore. Gilmore. One of the top receivers for uh, Stigler. Took it right at the numbers, picked up six yards. 
Actually, we'll call it seven. Stigler takes over at the 37. See how they respond, and uh, what quarterback comes back on the field? Number 13 comes back in. So uh, Zane Oldham will come into the game for Stigler once again. The Panthers rotating between quarterbacks as a second drive for Oldham. He led Stigler to a touchdown in his first drive. Oldham looking right, pressure, throws, complete at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard for his receiver that time, Oldham being pressured, and that was Ingle on the catch, the tight end that we were talking about coming up. Maybe a little hobbled after that last defensive possession. Catches the first ball for Stigler. Yeah, Brock Hall uh, came off the edge right there and made it tough for uh, uh, Oldham to uh, get a clean window there, but made a good throw and uh, completion there in spite of the pressure. Oldham in the gun, fakes the screen left. They set it up going right. Pass complete. Still oh, on his feet, going gone. to the end zone. Ridge McClary with a big play chase down at the five-yard line. Ridge McClary, great, really fake that time by Oldham, sets up a big play for McClary. He's brought down, but also a nice play of chasing him down in the secondary. Yeah, Connor Jenkins with a touchdown saving play. You got the fake uh, screen to the wide side, come back to the boundary side, find McClary and uh, had good numbers, had a line of blockers in front of him and uh, made a couple guys miss. And uh, uh, Jenkins saved a touchdown right there for sure. The running back, McClary, still back there with Oldham. They send man in the gun. They give it McClary. Running right, McClary shakes one tackler. McClary to the pylon. McClary, touchdown, Stigler. Defense optional so far in the first quarter in Shakota. McClary's touchdown ties it up at 13 apiece. Good job of response right there by Stigler, probably trailing for the first time this season as far as we know, and uh, responded in about a minute 50, five play drive. Uh, what they go, 72 yards, 70 yards? 68, I think it's where it was. Our statistician is us, so stats pending. Extra point is up and in. Enrique, Enrique Juarez shows his value there. Absolutely. Two extra points, uh, difference in the ball game right here. 14 to 13 is the score, but it's all set up by a big play from McClary. Yeah, great job on the screen and uh, good job of getting out in front there and giving him some blocks. Number 53 with a good block right here. And just a missed tackle, which really sprung him. Clancy Campbell couldn't bring McClary down. But as you mentioned, a good job of chasing him down by Connor Jenkins. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, we talked uh, a lot about Stigler's uh, versatility uh, offensively. They've given us a different look about every snap of the game so far, and uh, show that uh, they've got a lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, looks, a lot of ways to kill you there. Well, Stigler is returning nine starters on offense, and it really looks like it. They're a team that looks comfortable with the entire playbook. Yeah, they've got. Uh, I think he said they had 25 different formations they could show you. Uh, 25 different looks and personnel groupings, and, and uh, we've seen uh, close to a dozen of them so far. 14 to 13, the score. The Panthers in front of the Wildcats here in Chicago, Oklahoma. Scott Fisher back. Uh, no, it's Trent Dan back, and uh, Matt Clover looks like on the far side there. Set to kick off for Stigler is once again Enrique Juarez. Juarez has got a touchback. You don't see those very often in high school football. Juarez puts foot to ball, kicks this one away deep. Going to be fielded at the five-yard line by Clover. Clover's going to take it out. Clover running left side, upended at the 20-yard line. He's going full speed. He landed all the way at the 25. Yeah, great, great run right there. Uh, uh, coach is probably... Uh, Grimaced a little bit when he uh, received the field of the kickoff at the five, but uh, did a good job of uh, getting upfield and making a positive return of 20 yards out to the 25. We mentioned it was a big opportunity for Stigler to see how they respond. Shakota, with the early lead in this game, in a game that they are not favored to win, see if they can respond back and give the ball to Fisher in space. 
Fisher is in the backfield with Vernon. The give left side. Not a lot doing that time for Fisher. He does pick up positive yards. They're going to give him a nice spot as he moves up three. Brings up second and seven. Clock runs just under three minutes. It's been an exciting uh, first quarter, the best one we've had so far this year. We are in Big 12 territory here in Oklahoma, and this has been kind of like a Big 12 first half so far. Defense optional. Dante Fisher fake to him, slant pass, incomplete. Almost looked like a read option that time with Fish, with Vernon pulling it and looking for Dan on the slant, but nothing doing that time. Yeah, a little RPO action right there, and uh, Darren Maines, the uh, quarterback, uh, playing cornerback as well, did a good job of defending Dan there and breaking up the play. Six men in the box for Stigler, and the hard count gets him once again. Shakota will take the five, the free five yards, and this sets up multiple things in their offense now. They can use Fisher as a weapon, and they can also use him as maybe a decoy as well with third down and three upcoming. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it a lot more manageable uh, down and distance right here. You got Harris back in on the slot to the near side here. Look for him maybe as an option. Fisher step behind Vernon. They fake it to him. Vernon keeps. Vernon, first down and some. Falls forward just short of the 40-yard line. Jake Vernon fakes it. Once again, when you have Fisher bust two long plays, you can run the option off of that and pick up a big first down. Yeah, zone raid was the second time they've used that play to pick up a first down on third and manageable there. Fisher almost got the direct snap that time. Picks it up, maybe one before being brought down. Whistles blowing. We're going to have a late shove, and it is going to go against Dontier Fisher. I don't know that Fisher was the man that initiated that confrontation. Is you see right here at the end of the play, they're not letting Fisher go. You see right there, but Fisher with the shove against Martin Hare. I think Hare may have initiated it, but it's always the, the man that retaliates that gets caught, Curtis. Yeah, and uh, interesting to see what the other going to call it. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Fisher. Backs Shakota up 15. Self-inflicted penalties have stopped, have stopped Shakota early in this game. We saw that a little bit against uh, Ufala and uh, something Coach Ross emphasized in pregame to us. They cannot, they've got to have discipline to uh, maintain drives and uh, uh, bad play right there. I'm sure they got a guy in Fisher that uh, uh, probably don't want to make him mad with the night he's had so far. Uh, he, he probably has a way to make up for that play. Stigler's got a lot of bodies right around the line of scrimmage. About seven guys right there on the line of scrimmage. Vernon, keeper, spin move, line of scrimmage, nothing doing. Brought wow. down in the backfield by Vance Hamlin, the senior. Defensive tackle. Big play that time, third and long for Shakota. Yeah, Fisher's out of the ball game. I don't know if that's a... Uh... Uh, he's over on the sidelines here right now. I don't know if that's getting checked on here a little bit. Looks like Elijah Fuller is in it running back for Shakota. Vernon airs it out. Malachi Harris intended target overshoots him. On the defense that time is Braden Drury. Nothing doing for Shakota and the self-inflicted penalty it's going to cause them to punt it away with a minute three left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, good coverage there and cover four right there. And uh, Drew did a good job sitting on the out route and uh, playing it well coached in the secondary, uh, Stigler. Two early deep balls from Jake Vernon. We've seen that the deep ball maybe not right in the repertoire of the Shakota Wildcats. Punts away, and it's a good one. Going to drive Drury all the way back to his 35. It takes a Shakota, pardon me, a Stigler bounce towards Shakota's line of scrimmage. Going to be fielded at 
the 41. Good field position for the Panthers with just under a minute to go in the first quarter. I'm going to take this time to let you know this game is brought to you by Bravado Wireless. Check out your local Bravado Wireless dealer. For all of your wireless needs, they'll get you hooked up in cell phone coverage. They'll get you hooked up with some wireless coverage, your internet. And they will do it with a smile on their face. They are your local partner in the wireless game. Check them out online at bravadowireless.com. Stigler. McClary is going to be the running back. McClary with space. McClary to the 40. He's got to outrun Trenton Dan and Malachi Harris. He will not, but a big busted play by McClary. He gets Stigler all the way down to the 16-yard line. And it's just end around misdirection for Stigler. Got a little inside zone right there, a little guard tackle pull, and uh, handle the well. He bounced it right up the uh, middle and uh, made a great play. Ball spotted 19-yard line. Stigler in a hurry. Clock ticks under 30. Keeping it. Mains. Not a lot doing. Brought down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll give him one. Darren Mains is back in at quarterback after fumbling the ball in his last possession. The Stigler Panthers are rotating quarterbacks. They've done that all season long. Nothing new. Chris Reisenhoover, the head coach of Stigler, said that, well, for multiple reasons, they've been doing that all year long as the clock hits zero and first quarter's out. One reason was maybe because of a little COVID precautions. Another reason is because both guys want to play the position. Well, so far, so good for the Stigler Panthers. We have got an offensive showdown here in Shakota, Oklahoma, as Stigler leads Shakota 14-13 here on Bravado Wireless. You are called to be bold, to live out loud, to make the most out of every moment. You share these moments with your friends and family, side by side, across town and across the world. We are Bravado Wireless. We believe in the power of connection, coverage, speed, service, the latest technology. These aren't options, they're not special offers. They are obligations to you. We believe in building a community, your community. Bravado Wireless. 14 to 13, your score, 15 minutes as we start the second quarter. Pardon me, 12 minutes as we start the second quarter here on the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. Lots of fireworks, lots of big plays early in that first quarter, Curtis. Yeah, I see uh, multiple big plays by Dontier Fisher. Uh, two long runs, uh, get touchdowns, and uh, showed his explosiveness. And then uh, really uh, see the multiple uh, formations and the uh, balance of uh, Stigler here offensively and uh, both well-coached offensive teams here doing it different ways. Dontier Fisher, two long touchdown runs. Ridge McClary, he's punched it in once and has another long run to go with that. And kind of tit for tat so far in this game. McClary back in the backfield. They give it to the man in motion, Brock Butler. Butler, left side, Butler to the five. Butler almost to the goal line. Ball's on the ground. They're going to say that he was down. Oh, pardon me, that's not Butler. That is Grayson Gilmore. Yeah, Gilmore in the jet sweep, took the handoff, did a great job of getting around the edge, and uh, good blocking out there, set the edge by Engel. You see him in the slot, did a good job of blocking. and uh, Malka Harris brought him down right around the neck. Jumps on him like a backpack. Ball falls to the ground, but they rule Gilmore down. First down and goal. Right up the middle goes Maines. To the goal line, touchdown Stigler. Shakota hasn't had an answer for Stigler on the past two drives. They strike quick and lead 20 to 13. Yeah, we talked about uh, talked about it after uh, Shakota took the lead 13 to seven. How would Stigler respond and uh, to the adversity and uh, a lot of the self-inflicted wounds? And they responded quickly with two really strong drives and uh, emphatic scoring efforts there. The extra point up, the extra point, plenty of distance, and right through the uprights for Enrique Juarez. Take another look at Mains. Just straight power, straight ahead, and not a whole lot Shakota can do there as he punches it in for his first touchdown of the game. 
Maine's not touching a good job by the Stigler offensive line to push forward. Yeah, it looks like uh, Fisher, who came out uh, last series, is going to be back in the ball game. Uh, got some equipment uh, uh, reset and it looked like some issues with his helmet, and uh, he'll be back in the ball game this series. I don't mean to sound dramatic here, but with how Stigler is looked on the offensive side of the ball, Chris Curtis. This is a big possession for Shakota. They don't want to let this game get out of hand because it can quickly against Stigler. Yeah, Stigler uh, showing a lot of firepower, ability to uh, score quickly. They've got multiple weapons, multiple ways to do it. It uh, definitely looks like a Big 12 team with the way they run the offense here. And so uh, it's it's a game that uh, you can't let it get away from you. You certainly want to you, you'd be thrilled to go in a halftime tied or ahead. Uh, there's a lot of time left in this quarter, obviously, with 11.31 left, but uh, – uh, you know, you cannot, it uh, seems like they're getting a little momentum going here, and you can't let them get too far away from you. Kicks away, hits at the goal line, and goes into the end zone. Touchback, Enrique Juarez showing plenty of leg for Stigler. Impressive once again. Hats off to that young man. Shakota takes over at the 20-yard line, and you got to figure out a way to get the ball to Dontier Fisher and not commit penalties. Yeah, and uh, let's we'll see what they do here to start this possession. Looks like they've got Harris back in, which can stretch the fiddle a little bit. They've gone to Dan a little bit. They've been shown more balance and uh, more uh, willingness to throw the football deep uh, early in this game than they did against you follow a couple of weeks ago. Harris and Dan are at the near side of your screen. Give Harris jet sweep. Harris... Trying to get north and south, not a lot doing. Picks up about two. Trying to find a way to get Malachi Harris involved in the game. That time running it out of the backfield. Stigler stays home, second and eight upcoming for Shakota. Yeah, Grayson Gilmer, good job right there staying home, showing discipline on the jet sweep and making a great play. Second down and eight. Shakota looking to respond after Stigler scored two straight touchdowns and taking a 21 to 13 lead. Vernon drops back, fakes, Vernon running, lunges towards the sticks. He will be just short. Jake Vernon showing veteran pressure, veteran poise that time to pull that ball down, pick up, we'll call it six, so third down and two. Yeah, I thought that looked kind of like a design run because Fisher didn't ball fake at all, didn't stand. He, he was frozen there, and uh, – Really interesting play. Looked like the receivers ran stick routes, and then uh, Vernon just followed them up the field. Important third down up coming for Shakota as they try and stay on the field. Vernon in the gun, Fisher beside him. Screen pass, Harris. Harris puts his foot in the ground, but is not going to get the first down. Harris had space. First man to get there for Stigler was Zane Oldham. No, pardon me, that is... Lake and Bass. Bass. Great open field tackle. Harris was able to bounce that to the sideline. He could have gone for a long way right there and uh, decided to put, plant a foot in the ground and uh, cut it back up, and he was met by Bass right there. Bass there cleaning up late as well for Stigler was Martin Hare, but Zane Bass shows off some utility. Shakota's going to call a timeout. 9.34 left to go in the second quarter. And right now, all the momentum is riding on the Stigler bench as they lead 21 to 13 here in the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. Fourth and one on the 29-yard line upcoming for Shakota. They put their punter in, but Stigler 
Nobody back deep. They're going to run a fake. Shakota runs a fake, getting to the sideline. I believe that's Malachi Harris. Harris gets it. Curtis called it right before. Uh, but, I mean, that's Clancy Campbell, I believe, that came up with the huge fake. Yeah. Uh, Stigler, Matt, Stigler. Matt Clover was the guy on the carry, snapped it to the upright, uh, up back and uh, did a good job of uh, getting to the outside and making a tough run and gaining uh, two yards to get the first down. Yeah, that was indeed Matt Clover. Clancy Campbell came out of the huddle there, really excited, but it was indeed Clover. Curtis called it. He asked for the fake. Fisher, keeper, nothing doing. Right down, right at the line of scrimmage, but that's a good job by Shakota of just executing because Stigler wasn't fooled. They had everybody up. There was nobody deep. Yeah, just a good job of execution right there, but just felt like, uh, you know, not slowing Stigler down. You got to play with him, and, uh, you know, you got to like the call by uh, Coach Ross taking a chance and believing in his guys, and they executed. Fisher in the backfield with Vernon. Second and 10, screen pass, Harris. Get outside. Nothing doing that time for Harris. He's brought down two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Zach Ross dialing up the same play that he used on third down last time and really with the same result. Yeah, Maines did a good job at the cornerback position, getting off the block by Dan and uh, made a play in the open field again on Harris. Third down and a long after the huge fourth down conversion. Shakota hasn't gotten any offense going. Vernon has time. Out route complete. Cutting it up the field as Case and Flood brought down right at the line to gain. It's going to be about a yard short, but Flood did a good job reeling that one in and getting north and south. Boy, Grayson Gilmer popped him coming up from the safety position. Keep him just short. It's fourth and uh, fourth and one right here. They're yep. going to stay on the field and going to go for it. They've already gone for it once, and as you said, Zach Ross. a hard count right here and see if they can get him to jump offside. Zach Ross wanted his offense to stay on the field. They will so far, and we've got a flag on the far side. This, this early, with a flag that early, means that Shakota jumped offside, and that's going to be huge. Shakota can't get out of their own way on the offensive side of the ball, Curtis. A big play. You're going to force a pun here. I don't think you'll see him go back-to-back -back, uh, fake punts. I once coached with a guy who had nine different fake punt plans, and I saw him execute every single one of them in a game one time. And, uh, but they, I'm not sure they any other coach. Fake punted nine times? Fake punted nine times. Went fourth and 28 and got it craziest thing I've ever seen. That's impressive. Ball fielded at the 30-yard line with plenty of space to run. Running towards the sideline is Tanner is Braden Dury. Dury brought down at the 45. Flag on the play. Drury, big return that time, had a full head of steam, and this penalty is going to go against Stigler. Looking for the official. It's going to be a block, hole, in, the block in the back. Backs up Stigler. If you take another look at the Bravado wireless replay, Drury does a good job just getting behind the ball, and then he finds a hole to the right side, doesn't hesitate. Yeah, did a good job. You see a lot of guys these days uh, let the ball bounce. He did a good job of catching the ball off of bounce and uh, heading straight up field. It's a nice return negated by a block in the back. 6.47 left to go first quarter. It's enough time for Stigler to score three times the way they've been moving the ball recently. Shakota needs to come up with a big stop as they trail by eight points, 21-13. to 13. Yeah, they need to, they need to, got to delay unsportsmanlike conduct. It's going to, an unsportsmanlike conduct against Stigler backs the Panthers up 15 more yards. That's dead ball too, so it's going to be first and 25. 
the first down marker is all the way at the 44-yard line, where the line of scrimmage will be at the 19, 18. No, I guess they're going to say first and 10. So it's not a... Should have been dead ball. Should have been uh, first and 25. Depending on... <laughs> We've seen some interesting officiating on this field, I can tell you that. Stigler takes over ball placed on their own 19-yard line. Back in the game is Oldham. We've got man coverage here to the boundary. Oldham throws, pass complete. Nice haul in that time by Drury. Flag back at the line of scrimmage, but man, pardon me, Grayson Gilmore. Grayson Gilmore with a huge catch. He should have some good hands that time. Yeah, they're going heavy. The screen game here, last two or three possessions. Had the tunnel screen right there. He had yards to, get, yards to run. Penalty goes against Stigler. And where did they start? Where were they down after they caught that punt? Uh, he caught the punt on the, uh, was on the 44, was where he was tackled. He was tackled on the 44. Stigler now has ball, the ball. First down in... 16 at I'm trying to I can't see the ball they're going to place it at the 14 yard line this is the kind of drive that will make you age a, a year in a game as a coach Zane Oldham the senior in at quarterback has been electric he's led his team to two Touchdown drives. This time he's going deep. Ball in the air. Incomplete. Two Shakota defenders were there. Riley Campbell and Kaysen Flood. They both jumped a little bit early, though, and almost coming away with an easy one was indeed Drury. Used the motion to try to pull the safety up and uh, have the, the backside open on the post. And... Uh, Probably had him early, a little, uh, little late in delivering the football and uh, got a little air under it. Wasn't the best known ball he's had tonight. I like the play call. Second down, 15. Shakota bluffs pressure, only brings four. Rolling to his right, Zane Oldham going to keep it himself. Oldham, plenty of space. Oldham running backwards now, and he's going to find open space. Oldham, first down. Oldham all the way out to 35. A late flag comes in. Zane Oldham zigged and zagged his way to a first down. We're going to have to see what the flag was, though. When you drop everybody into zone coverage, nobody had eyes on the quarterback, though. Nobody spying the quarterback. And when Zane Oldham makes Shakota pay, he ran backwards there. We'll have to see what the flag is. Yeah, that was. Never saw. Shot block against Shakota moves the ball up 15. Shot block occurs within five yards of the line of scrimmage. And it's when two offensive linemen engage one defensive player at the same time, high and low. Uh, that was 25 yards past the line of scrimmage. I, I'm telling you, if I'm Coach Ross, I'm really wondering what in the world is going on. And that is the signal for chop block, right? Yes. Okay. Got play All action. Them. Deep ball. Looking for his intended target was Gilmore. That time, Malachi Harris did a good job getting his hand up and knocking the ball away. Yeah, I think it was Trent Dan on the uh, coverage. Uh, Harris came over the top in safety as well. Dan Dan was there. Harris was there. And Flood was there. Good job by Dan. I've been impressed so far with the corners for Shakota. They've been able to stick with Stigler on the deep routes. Yeah, they've got a lot to deal with when you're uh, defending Stigler. they got a lot of motion. they got a lot of uh, jet sweep action. Uh, give you a lot of different looks. You got to be disciplined. You got to be smart right here. Good route concept right there. Gilmore complete makes a man miss at the 45. Dropped after he picks up the first down. Grayson Gilmore has been both Oldham and 
Maine's his favorite target tonight. Yeah, a gain of about 13 right there. Good job on the in route. See him coming and setting uh, underneath the zone there. Just a about a 10-yard stop, came back to the ball. He's a good-looking receiver. He's done a good job after the catch as well. They've got a nice uh, group of receivers here. Ridge McClary in the backfield. He gets it running left. McClary makes a man miss at the line of scrimmage. Looked like he had space, but was tripped up at the 36-yard line. Positive yards, gain of six, brings up second down and four. Yeah, good job of going back to McClary. Uh, run the sweep to the wide side of the field right there. It's something to look they haven't seen a lot of. They've been rather a lot of run plays so far in the game, been to the boundary. They went to the wide side there. Got a good pickup. What's Nobody good? in the backfield for Zane Oldham now. See if he keeps it. He fakes one way, setting up a screen to the left, pass incomplete. That time Oldham felt the pressure and couldn't get it to his intended target. Looked like Lakin Bass was the man he was trying to get the ball to, but good job that time by Shakota of not letting Oldham get comfortable in the pocket. Yeah, fake the, uh, fake the screen to the wide side. That's the concept they uh, ran in the first or second series where they faked it to the wide side and came back to the boundary. Uh, they got McClary uh, with a long run there uh, in the first quarter. Same formation on third and three. Oldham, pass, complete, 30-yard line. Still on his feet, hard hit out of bounds. Lake and Bass with the catch that time. They couldn't get into him earlier in the drive. That time, pass complete, and it almost just looks too easy for Stigler. Right, they're uh, playing soft on the zone on the outside. They run a cover four concept on the back end of this. Uh, you're going to step up, probably take away that, uh, put a little more uh, pressure on the line of scrimmage and uh, uh, disrupt these receivers from the routes. Take another look. Five wide receivers, and Oldham just finds Bass at the sticks. This time, Stigler goes with four with McClary in the backfield, but McClary goes out for a pass. They find him at the 25-yard line. McClary bounced out of bounds at the 19, and right now the spread formation is working real well for Stigler. Yeah, McClary is uh, all over the field, obviously, plays linebacker on the defensive uh, side of the football, but a really good receiver, ran the ball, running the ball well, and a really good receiver out of the backfield right there. Stigler's cutting through the Shakota defense like a hot knife through butter. What do you do if you're Shakota to stop them? Uh, stun up front, uh, blitz linebacker, try to disrupt them somehow, some way. Four down linemen, we'll see if they send pressure. Nobody going after Oldham, he's got time. Now flush to the right, looking back left, throws it back in the end zone, has a man, but it's overshot. Intended target, Braden Drury. Drury was open, and man, just what an impressive job that time by Zane Oldham. Pressured from all sides, but does a good job of keeping his head and not panicking. Yeah, threw that ball to where it could only be caught or uh, be out of bounds, and uh, good decision right there by him. Good patience, but what we talked about, how do you disrupt him? You get pressure up the field. They got pressure up the middle that time uh, and got him out of the pocket. Not to be understated either. Shakota got pressure on him with just sending four, just sending the four down linemen. That's huge so you can drop back the other seven guys in coverage. Yeah. Give this side running left on his feet into the end zone. Gilmore, touchdown. Grayson Gilmore should have been brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Instead, he breaks two tackles and gets into the end zone. Poor tackling by Shakota leads to a two-score advantage for Stigler. He lost the ball after the handoff, didn't have it secure, almost gave it to a Shakota guy going the other direction, and it froze the defense, and then he spun around. There was nobody between him and the end zone. Extra point pending for Enrique Juarez. Snap down, kick up. Splits the uprights. Let's take another look. Look at let's look at this quarterback running back exchange. Bobble, he bobble. he didn't have it. It almost landed in a wildcat's hands. Yeah, Jonathan McGuire had it right in his hands. I think it bounced off of him and back into the hands of uh, of um, is it McClure Gilmore. Gilmore. I'm sorry. 
great, great uh, concentration there by Gilmore to get the ball back and turn up field and make a play. For those watching at home, when you're running the ball, it's never a great idea to have your back to the end zone that you're going. But Gilmore not only had his back to the end zone, he didn't have possession of the ball. And yet he grabbed it and scored. Uh, great play. Uh, you know, you see, uh, we've seen a lot of crazy things on this field. We've seen a lot of explosive plays, and tonight's no different. 28 to 14, Stigler with the two possession score. After scoring on their first drive, then fumbling it away on their second, Stigler has not been stopped on the offensive side of the ball. Scoring three straight times, they've touched it. Shakota, two big plays by Dontier Fisher have put them on the board, but they haven't been able to answer the past two times. They've touched the ball. With 3.39 left to go, it would be huge for the Wildcats if they could make something happen before half. Kick yeah. into the end zone will mean the Shakota takes over at the 20-yard line. Big drive right here uh, if you're uh, Shakota because you don't want to give them uh, uh, the ball back uh, with the rhythm that uh, Stigler's in, and then Stigler will get the ball to start the second half as well. And this is dangerous territory. If you give the ball back too quickly to Stigler, this game can get out of hand in a hurry. You can go from two scores to three scores, and like you said, before you touch the ball again, you could be down four scores. Yeah, it's time you got to go back to Fisher right here. Fisher in the backfield. They give it to him. Fisher up the middle. Fisher, space to run, picks up the first down. Dantier Fisher, 13 yards, sets the tone early for the Wildcats in this drive as he gets out to the 33-yard line. Inside zone play right there. Uh, Fisher was able to make... Uh, get through the first line of defense there and uh, get upfield, made a great play. They use the inside uh, run game a lot more than they had uh, last week against Ufala. Fisher stepped behind Vernon. They give to Fisher once again. It takes four Stigler defenders to bring him down. He gets positive yards on first down and just keep going to that same well if you're Zach Ross. Yeah, you see... Uh, Engel there, the vibe top 100 player, the middle linebacker, talked about him in the pregame. He's uh, not moving well. Uh, he's out there giving it a go, showing a lot of heart, but uh, not able to move as well as uh, I'm sure he'd like to. Engel number 30 sitting in the middle of your field. Screen pass, Malachi Harris. They've ran this play twice. Harris this time gets back to the line of scrimmage. There's a flag on the play. Now two more come in late. A lot of laundry on the field and we'll have to sort all this out and go Looks to... Looks like Fisher with another push at the end of the play. Yeah, you can see it right there plain as day. That is just a boneheaded play from Dante Air Fisher. You can't do that. Pretty good flop there too uh, by uh, Stigler's player and uh, it looked like an NBA flop. Uh, he didn't get pushed hard enough to get... Uh, sent five yards uh, in the air. But, but you got to be smarter if you're Dante Air Fisher. That's a play. I mean, whistles are blowing. You come up right behind a guy and shove him in the back. If it's going full speed, that's still illegal. That would be a block in the back. Just you've created so much for your team if you're Dante Air Fisher. But you're also the reason why two drives have stalled so far. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, we'll see. There are two. There are multiple flags. I think there are two penalties. I think you might see offsetting here. There was a penalty early that came that's either going to be a block in the back holding on Shakota, or maybe look like the defender that was trying to bring down Malachi Harris had him right around the horse collar. So you take another look right here. You see getting Bass. brought down by the horse collar. Lakin Bass was there. And then we've already seen the late hit, so... We go to our white hat, Mitch Davis. Dennis, pardon me. Block in the back declined by Shakota. And sportsmanlike conduct against Fisher. Backs Shakota up 15 yards. There's nothing to worry about, though, Curtis, for a guy that if he gets multiple unsportsmanlike conducts, that he's going to get thrown out of the game, is there? Um, no, not that I'm aware of, and uh, it's not like basketball. We have two technicals, and you get out of the ball game, but you might get benched, uh, showing uh, not showing better discipline than that. 
That's also if you're Fisher, you just got your first Division One offer in Iowa State. A lot of people are watching game film now, especially, you know, we're here showing the game. People are going to be able to see you. That just kind of shows a little bit of team, some off the field stuff, or not off the field, but on the field issues that you might have. Vernon fields the ball like a shortstop, makes a man miss in the backfield. Vernon running for his life. Now goes upfield and is brought down by awaiting Engel. Bruce Engel. Yeah, Engel didn't have a lot of mobility, but Vernon ran right into him right there. They had uh, Fisher on a screen play out here, but he couldn't get into the ball with the penetration off the edge there by number 53. Um, so I can't read that. <laughs> Keegan, uh, good. We're kind of sitting in the dark and uh, not well lit and uh, about a two font on the roster for Stigler. Five wide receivers. Vernon goes deep. He's got a man. Pass complete to Fisher at the 40. Fisher backpedals to the 32. Big play that time for Shakota. And we got another flop that time. He's like, look at the end of the play. Look like Stigler's trying to get Fisher into an unsportsmanlike. Conduct yeah, penalty. Yeah, same guy that flopped last time, number two. Good uh, throw by Jake Vernon, notches. though. Yeah, they lined Fisher up. First time we've seen him go empty and put him in the slot. Found him on a go route down the middle. and uh, Check out the end ball. of this play if we can hold on here for just one second. Shakota lines up. They're going to go with Fisher in the backfield, two wide receivers to either side. Malachi Harris in motion. They give him on the jet sweep. Harris puts his foot in the ground. Harris, with a spin move, gets to the 20-yard line, picks up the first down. Malachi Harris shows off his versatility and puts Shakota in the red zone. Great play there by Harris. Great patience. Uh, saw a wall of defenders out there, cut it back, and, uh, and then got a field, made a guy miss. Great uh, individual play there by Harris. Brought down by Morgan Jones and Ridge McClary. First down and 10 on the 19-yard line for Shakota. Fisher up the middle. Fisher through the middle. Fisher to the five. He's going to be held up there. There's a lot of red hats all around Dontier Fisher, and it looks like Stigler will hem him down right at the line of scrimmage, but all of a sudden he busts through. Yeah. Shakota calls timeout here. 34 seconds left in the game. That is why Shakota takes the timeout. Great job that time by Dontier Fisher. This is a momentum-changing momentum changing drive, though, for the Wildcats. 28-13, to 13, it looked like Stigler might get the ball back. They might have an opportunity to put another score on the board before half ended. Instead, you convert the third down and long, then you get a big play from another playmaker, Malachi Harris, and you're right here within making this, you're within a play or two making this a one possession game. Yeah, good call, uh, timeout right here. Let's see what they do. They've uh, done a good, better job than they did against you. Follow uh, putting uh, Fisher in uh, spots where it's a little tougher for him to, uh, um, to be defended, but they got him uh, in the backfield here. Vernon under center. I look for play action right here. Send a man in motion to the near side of the screen. Vernon dropped the ball. He's going to get maybe one. Brings up second and goal. 29 seconds left. Shakota's going to call a timeout. That's one of those situations, though, you're not used to being under center. Your entire game, you've taken snaps out of the gun and all of a sudden trying to switch things up, and it's just not comfortable for Jake Vernon. Yeah, you saw him give a different look there. They're obviously uh, trying to catch him off guard a little bit, and, uh, you know, just a, just a mistake. Uh, something Coach Ross talked about. you got to sustain drives. That's a play that uh, really hurt you because it looks like they had something set up. They definitely had numbers here unbalanced to the – near side and uh, weren't able to convert. That was Shakota's third timeout. That's big because on second down in five now, you if you run it with Dante or Fisher, you've got to get back up to the line quick and snap it. Yeah, you almost have to throw right here. Um, see what kind of look they give him. They give him a... Two wide receivers, one to either side of the field. 
They're going to run a wide receiver on late. That's Case and Flood. Yeah, Harris isn't in the game. Give right side Fisher, cuts it up. Fisher to the goal line, into the end zone, touchdown. Gutsy call there by Zach Ross to run it with no timeouts in less than 30 seconds on the clock. But it pays off because he gives it to his playmaker. Wildcats get into the end zone and cut the lead to 28 to 19. Yeah, going for two right here to make this a one-score game, try to get to seven points. And uh, what's a huge play, huge response by Shakota to go into halftime, one score down after it looked like uh, Stigler dominated most of the second quarter. Vernon in the gun. He's got Fisher to his right. It's Riley Campbell to the far side of the field. Vernon looks for him across the back of the end zone. Campbell in and out of his hands at the back of the end zone. Shakota goes for two, does not get it, but the big touchdown from Dante Air Fisher cuts into the Stigler lead. Yeah, great run by Fisher, showing a lot of toughness, making up for the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that started the drive there and uh, shows why he's got uh, D1 offer here from Iowa State this week. Dante Air Fisher has sent me on a roller coaster of emotions in this first half, Curtis. I can only imagine what head coach Zach Ross is feeling. Yeah, Zach Ross seems uh, seems uh, pretty patient. <laughs> a lot more patient than you and I would be, I think. But, uh, you know, when you got a special playmaker like that, uh, you know, guy plays with emotion. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's not a bad thing. you got to find a way to harness it. And like I said, he's one of the few guys that can make up for a mistake, uh, that can make a mistake of that uh, gravity and, and make up for it in uh, in a moment. And he, he did it with a huge play on the post route uh, down the field and, uh, uh, you know, to convert a big third down to make up for that penalty and uh, then got the touchdown to make it a, a one-score game. Yeah, Zach Ross's patience is why he's down there on the field with 40 young men dressed in blue and we're 40 yards away up here in the booth. <laughs> yeah. Pooch kick coming from Shakota, kicked high in the air and be fair caught at the 36, 37 yard line. This is dangerous territory though. I know there's only 23 seconds, but Stigler in two plays could put this into the end zone and be within distance. Let's see what the quarterback situation will be like. Mains is back on the field, the runner of the two. So that that would be in if they kept with rotation, Darren Mains like you said, would be the quarterback, and he is. I was curious if they maybe throw Oldham out there to see if they can't go deep. Instead, Maines back in the game. Stigler with one timeout remaining. 23 seconds. Screen a pass, a double pass. Double pass. They're going to throw it back to Maines. Maines with blockers in front of him. Maines to the 50. Maines to the 40. Cuts back across midfield. Main still on his feet somehow and is brought down at the 35-yard line. Clock continues to run. Stigler calls a timeout. Trickeration from Stigler puts them within spitting distance of the end zone. Well, answered our question of whether uh, whether or not they were going to be uh, uh, satisfied going in uh, leading by nine at halftime. He's trying to get more. It's a good play by Chris Reisenhoover. you got to believe that the double pass will not fall incomplete, or even if it does, that your guys could execute it well. That way, they, you know, if Shakota stays home, it's not a whole lot of – I mean, there is some risk there, but if Shakota stays home, got to trust your guys in Braden Drury. That way he doesn't make an ill-advised throw. Yeah, good throwback and uh, good blocking, good play scheme. He's got a lot of uh, Lincoln Riley uh, type of plays in him. It certainly been, it looks like he's been influenced by uh, the OU head coach uh, and some of his play calling. He, he's the king of Lincoln Riley's, the king of the double pass. This is very entertaining. You've got to have fun if you're going to play in the Stigler offense. This guy's moving all over the place. Maine still in at quarterback, being blitzed up the middle, rolls to his left. He keeps it. Gets out of bounds with one second on the clock. We'll see what the officials say. Clock's at zero. We are in Shakota, just letting you know. Waiting on Mitch Dennis. Maine stepped out of bounds with one second on the clock. He stepped out of bounds. I looked over, and there was one second. 
But that is indeed going to be the end of the first half. Head coach Chris Reisenhoover wants an explanation from Mitch Dennis. We take another look at Maine. Maybe, I mean, Maine's, this may be an opportunity here for Maine. He's not going to pick up a lot. Maybe throw it away. Yeah, he's rolling to his left, and he has a defender on his inside. That's a harder play to make. He was rolling to his right and had the defender to, to away from the ball. It's a little easier and what pass to throw away than it is when you're rolling uh, towards your left there. 28 to 19 is our halftime score. It's been an entertaining first half, to say the least. Defense optional here in Shakota, Oklahoma. Stigler leads Shakota 28 to 19 on the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. Stick around. So we're going to give you some halftime coverage of the Shakota Wildcats marching band here on Bravado Wireless. From nationwide coverage to live high school sports to the great outdoors and so much more, we've got something for you. We're a local wireless carrier right here in Oklahoma. We work for your town, in your town. But great cell phone signal in rural areas is just scratching the surface. We also broadcast live events from all over Eastern Oklahoma. High school football, basketball, baseball, dirt track races, livestock shows, and community events. Everything to keep you connected in your community. We're also producing original shows like Connect Outdoors and Cooking Wild that shines a light on real Oklahoman experiences. You can find us at bravadowireless.com or you can search for us on Facebook or YouTube. You can even find us on the Oklahoma Sports Network. You can download their app straight to your phone, Apple TV, Smart TV, or Roku. We don't just create for Oklahoma, we are Oklahoma. We're Bravado Wireless, Oklahoma's service provider. Stick around because we're cooking wild. Planning a weekend away in your camper? Take your Bravado Wireless home internet with you. Right now, our most popular internet plan has been chopped. While other internet providers are stuck at home with all of those wires and your obnoxious neighbor, Hank, you are free to take your wireless router to your home away from home. Visit us at bravadowireless.com to find a store near you. We are Bravado Wireless, and we believe in the power of connection. Whether your roads are dirt, paved, or if you're blazing new trails, the roads we travel lead to all of our most cherished places and people. Bravado Wireless strives to keep you connected wherever the roads may take you. We are the leader in wireless mobility and connection in Oklahoma and across the nation. We carry some of the market's top cell phone brands, fast, reliable home internet, and even greater customer service locally owned and operated right here in eastern Oklahoma. So whatever roads you travel, Bravado Wireless has them covered. From beginning to end. We are Bravado Wireless, and we believe in the power of connection. Mm-hmm. 
Shakota. Directors include Jim Davis and Ashley Hackler. The class is under the field direction of Sierra Princefield. Color guard captain Leilanti Hunzik. Drum captain Cody Epp. Song collections include The Great Awakening. Machine translation. Total takeover. The 2020 show is entitled Artificial Intelligence.
starts. Search in progress. Lock in enabled. Countdown starts. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Manual control enabled. Welcome back into Shakota, Oklahoma, just off of I-40 in this 3A District 3 conference game between the Shakota Wildcats and the Stigler Panthers has been nothing short of entertaining as you take a look at the halftime stats brought to you by Bravado Wireless. Shakota getting it done on the ground with Dante Air Fisher, but they trail 28-19, to Curtis. Yeah, it's been a really exciting game. Uh, Shakota's gotten a really good... Uh, uh, passing game from Vernon. I thought he played better than what he played against uh, Ufala the other night. So it's done a good job for him, but uh, Dante or Fisher has been uh, as good as advertised and uh, been very explosive. He's made a, uh, a couple of mistakes, uh, gotten a couple of uh, unsportsmanlike penalties that have hurt him, put him in the hole, but he's made up for it with his legs and his play. He's the uh, he's, uh, most explosive player we've seen this year uh, so far, and uh, it's done a great job for them to keep them in the ball game. Uh, really looked like Stigler was going to take over. They dominated most of the second quarter. As we saw the stats, you know, we talked to pregame them being balanced, and uh, they had two, 217 yards uh, rushing, 218 yards passing in the first half. That's about as balanced as you can get. Welcome up to the booth. Seth Campbell joined alongside Curtis Branch. And as you mentioned, the, talking about balance, the big key for Stigler was to make sure that they could con maintain continuity between both quarterbacks, make sure that both guys were playing to the best of their potential, and they really have. There hasn't been a 
really a drop off when either one of them comes into the game. No, they uh, they do a few things differently, but both quarterbacks can uh, throw it. They've used both of them to, to run it, and uh, they've used the Jets weep well. They've used McClary out of the backfield, and, uh, and they showed a tremendous amount of balance in, in uh, multiple formations, multiple looks uh, to really uh, attack uh, Shakota. That, they give a defense a lot to prepare for, more so than any team, the most advanced offensive team we've seen so far this season. And then for Dontier Fisher and the Shakota Wildcats, he has been electric when he gets beyond the line of scrimmage and thanks in large part to the guys on the line of scrimmage in his offensive line. Yeah, they've given him a good push. They've really dominated the line of scrimmage. Uh, and he's got good block, had good blocking on the uh, outside as well from uh, Dan and uh, from Harris when they've had opportunities. But uh, he, is, uh, he is one step away from going to the house and he's done it uh, twice tonight with the explosive runs over 50 yards and then uh, got one through the air. We talked about getting into the ball any way and everywhere they can and uh, split him out on a big third and 20 uh, plus and uh, he went down the field on the seam routes and uh, made a big play that led to their last touchdown. One of, one of the big keys I want to talk about really the second, uh, second half would be interesting is you know, the key to Stigler defensively is uh, Bruce Engel. He's uh, five top 100 players. That he's the anchor of that defense. Uh, Coach Reisenhoover uh, alerted us before the game that he was uh, struggling a little bit with an ankle. He'd been banged up last week. It kept him out of practice, kept him out of all activities. It's game time decision. Uh, his lack of mobility has probably hurt him. I know he's a better player than what he's shown tonight, and, and he's probably a key to – uh, uh, really trying to stay, uh, trying to corral Fisher as much as they can because the inside zone game is what uh, you know where he made he's made a play or two to the outside, but he's made more plays on the inside than he did, did against Ufala. That's a, a tribute to his line, and uh, that's a tribute to the zone blocking scheme. Probably Engel being banged up a little bit. This is a big possession for Stigler. Shakota's going to have to kick it away, and the Stigler offense is going to take the field first to start the second half. Ball teed up on the 40-yard line. Shakota hasn't stopped the Stigler offense from scoring a touchdown all the way since the second drive of the entire game. The clock ran out on Stigler last time they had the ball. As this kick is away and is going to be fielded at the 30-yard line. Dropped at the 30, moving towards the left. Not a lot doing for Gilmore that time. Grayson Gilmore hemmed in. And a good start if you're the Shakota defense backing Stigler all the way up inside their own 30. Yeah, Clancy Campbell down on coverage did a great job right there of uh, getting Gilmore corralled as he bobbled the ball on the uh, kickoff. Uh, need to talk to Coach Ross after the game about my uh, theory on the line drives to the uh, least athletic frontline player for the kick return team because I really think it works well. But uh, beside that, uh, good play, uh, good strategy there as uh, Stigler starts on the 27. Give right side with space to run, cutting it up at the 30, still on his feet at the 40 before he's brought down. Great job of running and a big first down pickup for like Stigler. Ingle. They did send Ingle in motion. That is Bruce Ingle having a hard time figuring out who it was, but that's a good sign if, if you're Stigler. Ingle moving pretty well there. Yeah, he moved a lot better than he did in the first half. Looks like the ankle's a little looser, feels a little better, and maybe just a confidence thing, but a good run right there and showed, again, versatility of this offense, multiple people uh, getting a touch with the football. Ridge McClary in the backfield. Man in motion is Gilmore. They give it to Ridge. Running left side before he's dropped at the 48 yard line is Ridge McClary on the tackle for Shakota is Kyler Pouncil good job that time by Pouncil of bringing down uh, McClary and stopping his progress yeah Council was a good dis uh, discipline right there not to go with the flow with the uh, motion jet motion action there and uh, staying home for the counter Oldham in the gun to start the second half for Stigler. His pass short but caught by Braden Drury. Great job by Drury coming back to keep the, catch that ball and uh, make a play on an underthrown ball right there. Stigler's run a few routes this game that the receivers have been smart just finding the hole in the zone defense that Shakota's running. Yeah, Shakota's employing a lot of uh, – 
cover four on the back end of this, which uh, gives you soft openings in the curl and the hook zones. They've done a good job of finding that when they wanted to throw the football. First down, they send Ingle in motion. Zane Oldham looking to throw. Goes deep. He's got a man underthrown. And they're going to throw a flag for a pass interference. Pass interference will be on Riley Campbell. Campbell never turned his head, and that's what's going to cost Shakota 15. Great uh, coaching right there. A great play, uh, really intelligent play there by Gilmore by coming back to the ball. Even though it was underthrown, he went through Campbell to come back to the ball, which, uh, uh, which uh, allowed the pass interference call to be uh, an easy call there. A free 15 for Stigler. Moves them inside the red zone. Again, you see the cover four that uh, Shakota's got and uh, went deep with Gilmore and uh, <clears throat> Campbell's got to be smarter and find the football. Shakota's ran a four front on defense all game long. Been dropping back in pressure most of the night. They send McClary in motion, give to Ingle running off left tackle, and his feet are taken out from underneath him. Flying in there for the tackle looks to be Trenton Dan. Good job that time flying in from his position at safety. Yeah, really good job support there and uh, coming up and making a play. I think that was actually Harris, Malachi Harris. Looked like we're so far away from the numbers, uh, and it is very dark in this booth. Harris plays safety over there. Dan is on Maybe the corner. They give it on the end around. Running right is Drury. Drury falls forward right at the line to gain. They give him the first down. They put it at the 11, so 11 yards to go for Stigler. Shakota just hasn't been able to stop this Stigler offense. Yeah, the uh, jet sweep's been very good for him tonight with multiple different uh, multiple personnel carrying it. They're not going to one or two guys, which makes it harder to key on. Uh, good job by Hall and uh, by uh, Case and Flood there uh, to make the play, though. Running left, McClary makes a man miss. Flag on the play as he gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Ridge McClary. Let's see if this play stands. The flag at the line of scrimmage. Our head official today, Mitch Dennis, will call this play back as McClary's touchdown Will not count after a holding call against Stigler. Yeah, I think they had an A-gap blitz, and the center reached over and grabbed, uh, grabbed the guy coming up the middle, which prevented uh, him from making a play in the backfield. Shakota, it's a big play. They get a touchdown taken off of the board for their defense. Let's see if they can gain some momentum from that and get Stigler's offense off of the field. First down, 20 yards to go. Oldham drops back, got a blitz coming from his blind side. Ball thrown in the air, falls incomplete. He was targeting Gilmore, but was being pressured off the left side by Connor Jenkins. Almost a cornerback blitz. So we take another look at the holding call earlier. Good job that time by Shakota to make Oldham uncomfortable in the pocket. Yeah, uh, Shakota on this drive is... Uh done a better job of pressuring him we you know when you let an offense like this get in rhythm you know, you, the, the only way to knock him off is to come and knock him on the ground and uh, they've come after him a little more this series zane and, uh, oldham is by himself throws on an out route and it's intercepted at the 10 yard line big interception by case and flood drop jumps the out route and shakota comes up with a huge stop Great play, dropping back into coverage right there. Read the stick route, and the uh, ball's just a little high and uh, a little slow to get there and made a great play on the ball. I mean, he's got to go make – he doesn't make that play. It's a touchdown. And then Case and Flood just jumps the route, comes up with a huge interception. If you're the Wildcats, that's exactly what you need. Your first stop against Stigler since the second drive of the game puts the offense on the field with an opportunity – to cut into the Stigler lead. Wide snap ends up in the hands of Dontier Fisher, and hey, you'll take it. It looked like really just skipped the process. So Jake Vernon, you, you don't even have to hand it off. Here, just get it, take yeah. it yourself, Malachi. Bobbled it right in the hands of Fisher. Uh, Fisher. Dontier Fisher takes it. Not a lot doing. They'll give him a yard. 
But avoiding disaster if you're Shakota, that's huge. After coming out with a big play, you don't want to give the ball right back to Stigler. Look to him to go to the screen over here. Vernon looks left, throws. Pass caught at the 29-yard line. Let's say it again, Case in Flood. He's having himself a heck of a game. Moves the chains. Shakota feeling the momentum shift back to their sideline as the clock ticks under eight minutes. Vernon with a heck of a play right there. Waited to long developing play. Waited till the very last second to get rid of that. Threw it off his back foot, but it got enough on it to get a first down. Good job by Kaysom Flood to adjust to the route as well. Dante Air Fisher lines up two yards behind Vernon. He gets a running start and makes a juke at the line of scrimmage. Still on his feet before he's falling forward. Tackled by Darren Maines, I believe. Take another look at this catch by Kaysom Flood. Off his back foot, Vernon just throws it up there, and Flood does a good job of adjusting. Yeah, Hodges on a, I think was on a uh, blitz off the edge out here and uh, and just missed getting Fisher in the backfield on that last play. Vernon looking right, throws, slant route, intended target Riley Campbell, but Campbell planted at the 39-yard line. He gets up slow, heck of a hit over the middle. Looks like Morgan Jones with that hit. Morgan Jones lays the wood, and that's a reminder. Campbell didn't make the catch that time, but he's also going to remember that next time he runs over the middle of the field. Yeah, it was a big-time play, a uh, big-time hit right there. That's one if you're Campbell that you go back to the huddle, you tap Vernon on the, the back of the, pat, the helmet and go, maybe throw that one a little closer next time. Big third down upcoming. They set up a screen pass to Trenton Dan. Dan bounces off a tackle at the 35, picks up the first down. Dan, foot race to the 30. Nobody's going to catch Trenton Dan. Trenton Dan with a huge play, takes a hit, stays on his feet in Shakota. Not dead yet. Wow. Tunnel screen. Dan makes a play. Uh, line of scrimmage breaks one tackle, and then it just opens right up in the cover, too, and splits the safeties and uh, wins a foot race. Fisher almost caught him, but he's on the same team to almost caught him in the celebration there. Fisher did a good job just getting in between Morgan Jones and Trenton Dan. Jones was the only guy that really had a shot, but I don't know, in open field, I don't know there's many people besides Fisher that are catching Trenton Dan. The extra point is up and through the uprights. Shakota Wildcats showing life in the third quarter after the interception. Trenton Dan says, house call. Look at Dante here, Fisher. He does almost catch him. I mean, Fisher was 30 behind him and almost got him in the celebration right there. Great job of maintaining balance by Dan and showing a lot of toughness. Malachi Harris coming in late to shield off uh, uh, Jones there. We've got us a ball game here. Shakota's defense with the interception, and Shakota does a great job of responding. The tunnel screen, and right there, the missed tackle. Dylan Hodges puts a shoulder into Trenton Dan. That's a great job of just staying on his feet, staying balanced, and that's when all lifting all those weights in the offseason pays off. If you're, if you're a lesser man than Trenton Dan, you fall down right there. Yeah, uh, great play, but let's give a lot of credit to Vernon there. Great throw under, uh, under duress right there. He's made some big-time throws and big completion on third down uh, to keep the drive alive, and then big, another big completion on third down. He's made some plays for him. Uh, it's given uh, Fisher support from the quarterback position uh, tonight that's uh, allowed them to make this a ball game. We, we got a two-point game with 6.41 left here in the third. Ball teed up at the 40-yard line, 26 to 28, your score in favor of the Stigler Panthers. The kick is away and will be fielded at the 24-yard line. Running left is Drury. Drury spin move brought down at the 30-yard line. Good job of kick coverage by Shakota. They've kind of gone away from that pooch kick and are kicking it a little bit deeper. Yeah, doing uh, 
uh, changed things up a little bit in the second half and uh, really helped them with field position. They gave the ball to uh, uh, Stigler around the 40 um, most of the first half with their uh, uh, pooch kicks, and so they've gone a little deeper, and it helps them with field position a little bit here. This big drive right here, uh, boy, it's an exciting ball game. We'll see what uh, Stigler does to come out with Maines back in at quarterback here. Darren Maines is in at quarterback. So Stigler and head coach Chris Horizon Hoover are sticking to their quarterback rotation. Maines is in five wide receiver. Look, pass complete, Ingles. Picks up six for this five-yard stop route. Good throw right there. Gives him a positive yardage. Keeps him ahead of the chain start for second down on this drive. The deep balls that Stiegler has been able to complete today have garnered the respect of Shakota. They're not pressing up on any of those receivers. Yeah. You see the cover four. They're lined up in the cover four straight across here. You can see that. Um, I think if you're um, Shakota, you probably come back and uh, put a little pressure on them right here. You got McClary back in to the side of uh, Mains this this play. McClary, give up the middle. Picks up the first down, falls for a good job of hard nose running from Ridge McClary. He falls to the 46. Good push from the offensive line as well. Still staying in your frame. Vance Hamlin there finishes the block well. Shakota, the only times they've been able to stop the Stigler offense has been off of turnovers. They would love another one right here. Clock ticks under 530. Four-man pressure. Nobody pressuring Mains. He goes deep. Throw complete at the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Grayson Gilmore. Gilmore got behind the defense, and the Stigler Panthers respond with a deep shot of their own. Good throw right there by Maines. Uh, the running quarterback of the two showed good arm strength and uh, hit him on a go route and just ran right past him for a touchdown. Good ball, good catch. Sometimes you're the hero. Sometimes you're the zero if you're Case and Flood. That time he got burned, and Stigler takes an eight point lead. Big extra point pending to give this, make this game two possessions. It's up and it is pure. We take another look. Looks just be a straight go route from Gilmore and Maine just has too much time in the pocket. In flood, you can't let that guy get behind you. Yeah, he made a great play last possession and uh, just, uh, let Gilmore run right past him right there for uh, one of go routes and uh, quick uh, response by Stigler. Stigler's offense has been nothing short of electric. They've made mistakes, and Shakota's taken advantage. The, the fumble that they were able to get and then the interception that Shakota was able to get as well. But besides that, Stigler really it hasn't been stopped by Shakota. They show you multiple looks. You mentioned almost Lincoln Riley-esque. Yeah, that's a concept right there that you'll see a lot with the trips. And they fake the bubble screen right here, send the guy deep on the out of the middle and uh, right down the seam for go routes. And, uh, you know, if uh, Flood looked like he, he played Gilmore a little more than the ball, and if he plays the ball a little bit, he probably makes that play. Kick hits at the five and hits off of Malachi Harris. He's got to field it. Harris puts a foot in the ground, runs right with a leap. Harris into open field. Harris midfield. Harris to the house. Touchdown Malachi Harris off a ball to hit him in the face mask. Tit for tat, we go in Shakota. Folks, don't go anywhere. We got a ball game. We're going to have truckers uh, pulling off a of 40 to watch the end of this game, folks. Nice. Malachi Harris leaped at the 25-yard line, and then it was a foot race. And we've seen multiple times today that if Shakota gets in a foot race, they're going to win. Yeah, they've got some speed. Harris is uh, great speed right there. You see this so much on special teams plays where a guy bobbles a ball. I think it happened in our last time we were here, and they bobble a, uh, bobble a kickoff. Defense kind of relaxes, thinks he's going to fall on it, and then, bam, he goes to the house. This because is a, 
because the cover team does not stay disciplined, stay in their lanes, and they relax for just a second. And you let a playmaker like Harris get an opening, and he's going to take it to the house. It's a big false start. That backs up the extra point five yards. Shakota's still going to go for the extra point here. Right now, it's a three-point game. This game may be who gets it last. Kaysen flood. The kicker for Shakota. The kick is up. Hit wide left. No good, but we've got another flag on the play. The officials are discussing it at the 15-yard line. You know, we've done five games together. This is our fifth game together this year, and there have been more big plays in this game than the previous four combined. Personal foul against Stigler. That's huge. After the miss from Case and Flood, that's going to move the extra point closer. This would be half the distance which would I, I don't know. to the five. I don't know if the Zebras know where it's going. They're going to put it back at the normal. Nope, they're going to put it at the four. They split the difference between the five and the normal spot. All right, Kaysen Flood back in his wheelhouse. After missing the first one, he's been pretty consistent. See if he stays that way for Shakota. Snap back. Hold down, kick is up, and it is good. 35 to 32, you score. Don't go anywhere in this wild game because you'll miss something. You see him break down here on the cover, and he gets uh, outside contained, kind of falls down. That's a hurdle move. And uh, I couldn't hurdled him, and then at this point, it's over. It almost looked like. Wade Wilson had an angle on Harris, but Harris makes good angles go bad. Yeah, he, uh, great speed. Uh, you know, we, we talked about that a little bit. Same bobble kind of people lose discipline in their lanes, and then, boy, you make one guy miss, and uh, electric speed right there. He's uh, had a heck of a game. And, and unlike the game against Ufala, the Trenton Dans and the Malachi Harrises and the Vernons have stepped up and played great football tonight and have given uh, Fisher the support he needs to be the player that he is. And so it's really made for a great ball game here. Excited to see the last uh, 16 minutes of this ball game. and Flood will be the kicker. Stigler's got three men deep to return it. This one is going to go to Grayson. Gilmore, Grayson Gilmore. Gilmore on his feet, and he loses and he the ball. Ball on the 45-yard line. Looks like Shakota fell on it, waiting for the officials. Huge momentum play here, and Shakota has the ball. Two huge plays on special teams have given Shakota all of the momentum. You take another look. Grayson Gilmore just lost it. Yeah, he's made a lot of great plays for, uh, and he was not touched. I mean, he, uh, you know, he bobbled the snap and, and bounced it off a player and uh, just loose with the ball right there, not three points of contact, had two, and uh, just lost it in uh, looking upfield. When you play with the devil, eventually you're going to get burned. Grayson flew. got, got Fisher on a wheel route. Vernon doesn't see him, though, as he's being pressured. He steps up in the pocket, gets a yard. Wheel route was covered well there uh, off the play action with Fisher going down the sidelines. Uh, did a good job of finding him, and, and uh, Vernon made something out of nothing right there. May have had flood on the out route, but good job by the Stigler front four to get pressure on Vernon and not make him comfortable. Well, it's to be a big drive right here if they can punch it in and take the lead down two. Second down in nine. Clock continues to roll. We're about at four minutes to go in the third quarter. Fisher's in the backfield with Vernon. They give it to him running right. Fisher picks up positive yards. They'll give him four. They'll give him three. Third down and six upcoming 
This is two down territory if you're Shakota. If they line up to punt, I don't buy it. Uh, this is go time for both teams. This is a, uh, you know, you're really excited if you're Shakota in this ball game, and uh, you've got to be a little nervous. You're Stigler. You haven't been in this position this late in the ball game this season. Trying to get Stigler on the hard count is the quarterback Vernon. He looks, under 10. he looks to Ross. Play clock's at five. Shakota's got to go. Three, two. Vernon gets it off. Looking right the entire way. Plenty of time. Throws deep. Malachi Harris. It's complete. Harris by himself behind the defense. Touchdown, Shakota. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Snip, snap, snip, snap. We're going to have to get the highway patrol out here to shut down traffic on 40 so they can watch into this ball game. This is crazy. Back and forth we go. Shakota takes the 39 to 35 lead. Malachi Harris, that was just an answered prayer there from Vernon. Vernon, that clock was going off in his head because it was past four seconds for sure. He just throws it up. Malachi Harris answers the prayer. The extra point is up and through no bad angle here not through but Shakota retakes the lead for the first time since the first half so we take another look Vernon Vernon with time finds Malachi Harris great job by the Shakota offensive line ran a post corner there it's a late developing play you got to have patience in the pocket and he finds him and just not disciplined right there 15 uh, uh, Sorry, Lake and Bass uh, saw the under route and bid on it. Uh, gave it. It's a kind of an option route for uh, Vernon to make a read there. And he read the safety coming up on it, threw it over the top, touchdown. And you got a new ball game here with Shakota leading 39-35. I know when, when Zach Ross drew that play up, he definitely had at the end of it Malachi Harris moonwalk backwards waiting on the ball to get there. But you'll take it where you can get it. And Shakota leads by four. Boy, if you coach Ross, you got to be really pleased with Vernon's play tonight. Uh, doesn't have the greatest arm that we've seen, but he has thrown great balls all night. He has uh, done a really good job on the screen to Dan, the, the play, third down play to Flood to get continue that drive, and then uh, the strike to uh, Fisher down the middle, and then uh, that play there to Harris. He's made a lot of plays with his arm tonight. Kick is away. Redemption time for Grayson as he's hit at the 39-yard line, driven backward. Nothing doing for Grayson Gilmore. Looking for redemption that time. He held on to the ball. Yeah, Mason, uh, Mason, Matt Clover and Clover and uh, Clancy Campbell there on the coverage did a great job. Campbell's uh, been a special teams. Uh, playmaker out here again though that ball is loose if i am grayson gilmore you got to tuck that thing away yeah that's another big play waiting to happen if you're getting brought down that ball should be as you said three points of contact into your chest well if you're stigler you're ranked fourth and 3a here you're on the road uh first time in district play you're behind how do they respond right here now, this is going to test their metal set up a screen route ingle underneath now he's going to bounce it outside ingle just with space to run Engel still on his feet past midfield. Stiff arm at the 40. Trent and Dan trying to bring him down. Are you not entertained, Curtis Branch? Goodness gracious. Well, I was thinking about calling in sick tonight. I'm sure glad I didn't. This has been an entertaining ball game, and uh, all the playmakers are making plays. Engel, we had a quiet first half. He has made several plays on the offensive end here and uh, go to him on the uh, tunnel screen to start the, this drive. Grayson Gilmore in motion. They fake it to him, give it to McClary. McClary bounces right, going to be brought down right out of bounds in front of the Shakota bench. That's scary. Everybody is okay. and you got to be careful, though, if you're Trenton Dan. That right hand came awfully close to finding a horse collar. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Shakota defense is playing with a lot of enthusiasm right now, a lot of energy on their side. We'll see how uh, uh, Stigler uh, continues this drive. They got uh, second and uh, what's about seven right here. It's just been mistakes that have limited Stigler. Really hasn't been the Shakota defense. Now, Shakota defense has been a good job of forcing those mistakes. 
Oldham in the gun, nobody beside him. Five wide receivers. He's looking for Grayson Gilmore on a wheel. Nothing doing. Gilmore rolling left. Gilmore picks up about four or four. He's knocked out of bounds. They're going to give a late hit. Late hit out of bounds. That's a tough call. Making the tackle on the far sideline was Dalton Johnson. PA announcer in the next room, one of the uh, holding call there, didn't get it. That's Jalen Atkins, pardon me, on the late call there as he's coming off the field right now. Good effort by Atkins, just couldn't pull up late as he stepped out of bounds. Big play gives him the first down and uh, moves it inside the 20 to the 18. Shakota defense, a lot of hands on the hips. Sucking air. We still have two minutes and 23 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Stigler yeah. runs to the line. I think you're Stigler. I mean, if you're a Shakota right here, you got to bring some uh, pressure off the edge here. Look for 14 off the edge right here. Ingle in motion. Give to him. Running left. Bounces outside. Ingle in space. Ingle goal line. Touchdown. Stigler with the response. That's why you're a top team in 3A. Shakota, all the momentum on their side. Stigler, no problem. A grown man drive from Zane Oldman, Oldman, Oldham in the Stigler Panthers. Yeah, if you're a top five team in your class in the state of Oklahoma, that's the kind of response you want to have and you expect to have on the road in district play in a barn burner. The snap skips back to the holder. But just like a shortstop, no problems. We take another look and just a lot of Shakota bodies there, but a good job of blocking from Stigler. And Ingles just goes in untouched. Yeah, the ankle looks a lot better than it did in the first half. And uh, senior leadership right there says, boys, give me the ball. I'm going to take it to the house. I don't know what they gave Bruce Ingle. Maybe it was some of Mike's magic stuff in halftime, but I want some more of it. 42-39 to 39 is your score. Don't go anywhere. You'll miss something. 2.15 left to go, third quarter. Bravado Wireless, we go to break here on the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. We're back. We'll talk about quick scores in this game. That was a quick break. 42 to 39 is your score. We told you not to go anywhere. You'd miss something. Ball teed up at the 40 yard line. So do you kick it away from Malachi Harris? Uh, if you do, you're kicking it Dante Air Fisher. I'd probably kick it on the ground or kick it. Probably kick it deep here. They do kick it deep, and having Enrique back there means that you can kick it into the end zone. Enrique Juarez does a good job of taking away the weapons of the Shakota Wildcats. 42 to 39 is the score. Shakota, with two huge special teams plays in the third quarter, have brought them right within this game. You've had success going to the passing game, but also, if you're Zach Ross and the Shakota Wildcats, don't forget about the man that brought you. You, know, you want to dance with the guy that got you here, and that's Dante Air Fisher. Yeah, new look right here. Got stacked formation to the near side. Screenplay, Malachi Harris running outside. Malachi Harris up the sideline, picks up six. They've run the screenplay to Malachi Harris multiple times, but never out of that stack. That time they had some success. Yeah, it allows uh, Dan to block a little more directly, uh, the way that forces defense to line up right there. Dan had missed a couple of uh, blocks on the outside uh, on earlier uh, screen plays. He did a great job right there. So this is the time to have a money play. Second down, four to go. Dan lines up two yards behind Jake Vernon. Give, give Fisher, pardon me, Fisher. Over left tackle, picks up two. You might call me crazy here, Curtis, but I'm not punting the rest of the game. No. Stigler, Stigler's only time you stop them is when they stop themselves. Yeah, you see Engel getting downhill right there, making a big-time play on the inside zone and uh, doing a good job, uh, a lot more active than he was in the first half defensively there. Third down in two. 
We've seen uh, zone read right here, Vernon keeping the last couple of times on plays like this. Slant route complete, 36 yard line. Good job holding on by Riley Campbell. That's gonna be a Wildcat first down. Yeah, good catch and uh, throw, right, a good throw and catch right there and uh, sustain the drive. What, what Coach Ross was really concerned about, one of the big keys to him was sustaining drives. They've converted uh, about every third down uh, play this, uh, this uh, half. Dante Air Fisher stopped in the backfield, now reverses field. You better get him down. Dante Air Fisher to the 40, lowers his shoulder. Grayson Gilmore, Dante Air Fisher. Dante Air, you gotta be quiet here. He's gotta be careful before he gets another unsportsmanlike conduct. Fisher, you love the passion that he plays with, but also he's already cost his team 30 yards on unsportsmanlike conducts today. Yeah, uh, Stigler brought Engel uh, uh, up the middle on an A-gap blitz, and uh, Fisher made him miss in the backfield. And again, he showed the ability uh, to take a loss, a potential loss, and turn it into positive yardage, picking up six and a half on that run, which seemed doomed for uh, a loss here. you got the same stack formation here. I'd look for a go route off the fake. This time give Fisher running off left tackle. Fisher puts his head down, picks up two on a second down and four play. Third down and two now. This is, again, right in the wheelhouse. Good job by Dontier Fisher picking up two yards, and you've got all kinds of options if you're Zach Ross and the Wildcats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Got stack formation again, and then you probably got a zone read right here. I'd look for Vernon. Want to keep? Want to keep. Hard count gets Stigler on Fisher the lean forward. On the far side, Dylan Hodges might have crossed the line. We'll see if they get. If you notice Fisher right there, as they started walking up, he leaned forward. Uh, but uh, nobody caught that from the officiating uh, crew, and uh, I think that's really what drew Stigler off sides. They were faking blitz, and F Fisher kind of leaned just a step, and uh, they crossed the line of scrimmage right there. Uh, but uh, Stigler got called for the encroachment. Ballish, no short of the 50-yard line. Trenton Dan to the bottom of your screen. Vernon fake, quarterback keeper all the way. Not a lot doing. Vernon reverses field, does a good job just getting back to the line of scrimmage. There were four Stigler defenders around him. Vernon gets north-south, puts his foot in the ground, brings up second down and 10. We'll switch into the field. Here is the third quarter is done. It was an entertaining 12 minutes as the Stigler Panthers lead 42 to 39 here on the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. Planning a weekend away in your camper? Take your Bravado Wireless home internet with you. Right now, our most popular internet plan has been chopped. While other internet providers are stuck at home with all of those wires and your obnoxious neighbor, Hank, you are free to take your wireless router to your home away from home. Visit us at bravadowireless.com to find a store near you. We are Bravado Wireless, and we believe in the power of connection. Here in eastern Oklahoma, we know that dirt roads have a unique way of helping us find direction. Whether you're figuring out where you're headed or where you came from, Bravado Wireless was built on the back roads to help you find your way. Right now, you can get three free months of our premium wireless plan with your choice of an iPhone SE on us or half off an iPhone 11. No matter what direction you take, Bravado Wireless has you covered. We are Bravado Wireless and we believe in the power of connection. Welcome back into the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. Dante Air Fisher with the keep. Dante Air Fisher with the first down. Dante Air Fisher, the man of the hour in Shakota. We'll have to see if the run stands after a flag on the play. Holding goes against the Shakota Wildcats. That'll back them up 10. In the game that Shakota played against Ufala two weeks ago, backing the Wildcats up 10 yards would have been basically a death sentence. 
They showed really no signs in the throwing game that they could really compete. Dante Air Fisher was a two-hit wonder. He ran into the line of scrimmage multiple times before he could bust a big play. Shakota looks like a completely different team tonight. Yeah, the, the throwing game has uh, really opened up the offense. Vernon has done a great job with his arm tonight. There you go. You got the fake, and they're going deep. Deep pass intended for Campbell, and he was double covered that time. Good job by Stigler of staying home. On the coverage was Darren Morris and Morgan Jones. They faked the underneath route, tried to go deep. Looked like Malachi Harris may have been the option there. Brings up third down and long. That's that stack uh, formation that we saw where they threw the screen, screen, and at some point you're going to go deep on that. that they went there. Fisher's three yards behind Jake Vernon. See if he gets a running start. They give it to him. He has to make a man miss in the backfield, still dragging a defender, but still on his feet. Dante Air Fisher loses the ball at the midfield, and Stigler comes up with it. Dante Air Fisher makes three guys miss. We're going to have to see if they rule him down, though. There's a lot of zebras right at midfield. They're going to rule that he fumbled it. Mains on the, uh, on the recovery right there. Great second effort. Making guys miss, and I think the ball like was Bass out. Got a helmet on him. Uh, yeah, Lakin Bass. Got, got the hit to knock the ball loose. Big play there. Momentum shifting once again. 39-42 to 42 is the score. Stigler with the ball. And they have an opportunity to make this a two-possession game. Who do the Panthers run in at quarterback? Maines, who recovered the ball, comes back in at quarterback. Darren Maines. Sends Ingle in motion. They fake it to him. He's looking left. Throws. Pass to the 35. Complete to Drury. Drury wanted a long comeback route. Looks like that's almost a go, and then he just came back yeah, to find the ball. Yeah, he came back on a scramble, which you see a lot of uh, spread teams do. They work the scramble. Maines kept the play alive, and he came back to help his, his quarterback out right there. Should take another look at the fumble. Dante Air Fisher definitely lost that ball before he was down. Mains, even though he's known as uh, the better runner, uh, definitely has shown uh, good skill with uh, throwing the football tonight. That was a good ball and a great play to come back and compete for it. That's kind of what you see in the scramble drill in college a lot of the times. After four seconds, as Mains keeps it, Mains untouched to the 30, lowers his shoulder, gets to the 24-yard line. After about four or five seconds, receivers are taught to turn around, see where the ball is at, and come back towards the line of scrimmage. Good job on the previous play by Drury to do that. Stigler showing great poise. Again, the only time they've been stopped is on turnovers. They've never, they haven't punted this entire game. Second down and one upcoming. Going empty set right here. Be surprised if you see a quarterback draw. Right. Mains rolling right, does keep it. Mains untouched to the 20. Mains in zone. Mains touchdown, Stigler. That's a two possession lead for the Stigler Panthers. Great job of blocking up front. And Darren Mains comes through for Stigler. Yeah, really good uh, response there. Good, That was all Mains. He got the fumble recovery, made a great uh, play on first down, and two runs into the end zone. Chakota's defense looks gassed. Enrique Juarez on to make it a 10-point lead. The kick is up, and it is good. Take another look at Mains as we run into the end zone, just running off right tackle, and not enough white jerseys flying to the ball and a bad angle by Casey Flood. Well, really good blocking on the edge. Let's give credit to his blockers out here. They did a good job of sealing the edge. You'll see uh, Gilmore uh, out on the cornerback. You see number 12 right here leading the way, turning the linebacker to the inside, and then he makes uh, Flood miss, who's coming up from the safety position, beats him into the end zone. Flood was just a step late coming up on the run support right there. But, you know, you see a lot of good teams uh, run uh, 
good uh, spread teams or air raid teams. They all run block. Those receivers run block really well downfield, and that was one of the best examples that we've seen tonight. Chicota trails by 10 with exactly 10 minutes to go. Ample opportunity to get back into this game. You got Dan and Harris back deep for them. They've been at the 15-yard line all game long. I'm surprised that they don't drop back just a little bit more. Harris going backwards, fields it at the five, running right side. Not a lot of room for Malachi Harris. He cuts it upfield and is going to be dropped right around the 10-yard line. It's just me, but Juarez has kicked the ball to the five-yard line all game long. Why don't you keep lining up at the 15? Uh, don't know. There may be a little wind out of the east that we don't see here in the booth because the, the balls going to the west have, have gotten to the end zone pretty easily. They've not gotten that deep, but still, uh, you're right. I mean, I think I'd have my guys back at the goal line coming up as opposed to backpedaling to catch it. Dontier Fisher lines up in the pistol formation behind Vernon. Malachi Harris in the slot to the far side of your screen. Give Fisher running left. Fisher with room up the middle. Almost busted it to the second level. Good job by Morgan Jones to him Fisher in, but not before he picks up eight. Yeah, good run support there by uh, Jones coming up from the safety position and uh, making a play. Offset eye formation. Big play for Shakota. If they can strike fast, they would love it. Running off right tackle still on his feet is Dontier Fisher. He picked up the first down. He moves the chains. That's doing exactly what you need to do there, knowing where the first down marker is and moving those chains. Yeah, good play there by Vance uh, Hamlin in the middle. Uh, catch him on the cutback and limiting a uh, bigger play. Trenton Dan has been quiet recently for the Wildcats. We'll see if they get him involved. He's on the far side of your screen, the receiver to the top of your screen. Fisher dropped in the backfield. Boy, he was met by a host of Panthers right there. First one to get to him was Keegan Good, but also there on the tackle is Vance Hamlin. That time, Fisher couldn't make any Stigler Panthers miss, and it's going to be second down and 11. Puts him behind the chains for one of the few times this half. The safeties are within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Malachi Harris on his feet, misses one, gets one tackle to miss, but does not get the second. So he's dropped at the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard behind it. Brings up third down and long. We've got a stoppage of play. We had an issue on this side of the field. Number two collided into, uh, sorry, that's uh, Dylan Hodges. Looked like he collided into uh, Coach Ross on the sidelines. The line judge was talking to the uh, head official about it. I'm not sure what the penalty would be called if it would be a sideline interference. Or... Yeah, I'm not sure if we have a look at that. That would be, I'm not I'm not sure what it was really happening. Yeah. There's a long conversation happening at the 20, the 19 yard line. Hodges is over talking to Coach Rising Hoover about what happened. Not sure what happened. Remember, he's one of the guy. He's the guy that flopped the, on the second unsportsmanlike conduct penalty with Fisher. Um, No flag has been thrown yet. Now they're going to throw an unsportsmanlike on Stigler. Targeting unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah. So is that met with an ejection? Is that? 
That's what the uh, guys in the booth next to us are saying, the play by, uh, PA guy for uh, Shakota. I'm not sure. Um, we don't have mics on the officials tonight, so we're not going to get a verbal explanation. I think Coach Reisenhofer wants a verbal explanation right now. Yeah, they're going. They're going to eject number two. It looks like. No longer in the game is Dylan Hodges, the senior. He's playing corner on the near side of the field, and he. I didn't see anything, but from what we've heard, it was him running into head coach Zach Ross on the sideline. Took him down and uh, kind of looked like he led with a helmet potentially, and who knows. Hard to speculate because we didn't see it. Big opportunity for Shakota. First down, Vernon throws out route, complete to Flood at the 35-yard line. Kaysen Flood came out with a huge catch on that exact route on third down in the third quarter. He moves the chains with that catch, and Shakota's to the 44. Really good play design right there to clear out the zone deep with uh, the go routes by uh, uh, is it Riley? and uh, Riley Campbell and uh, Harris and then uh, left the under for Flood. Stigler showing bringing five. They do. Fisher up the middle. Brought down by the linebacker, Engel. Fisher, again, going to have to sh watch his after-the-whistle antics. Yeah, he, uh, he doesn't take a lot of grief from guys, but he's got to have enough discipline to not penalize his team again. His entire shoulder pad is hanging outside of his jersey. He's trying to put it in himself. Somebody help the poor man. And there he goes. He got it. Look good, feel good. Feel good, play good. Yeah, we got a guy. Uh, looks like Gilmore is hurt for uh, Stigler. Uh, went down. I think he's got a sprained ankle or something. He's, uh, he's holding, holding his, his left, left ankle. 6.56 left to go in the fourth quarter. We're going to take a break. 49-39 to 39 is your score. Shakota with the ball and driving on the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. Welcome back into the Bravado Wireless Game of the Week. You see on the ground is Grayson Gilmore. He's getting tended to by the trainer. If you're Stigler, you want to see Gilmore in the game. He's been electric on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you got the two coaches uh, having a discussion uh, in the middle of the field. The officials are uh, breaking it up here. Good use of a uh, player injury there to uh, do some extra coaching uh, out in the middle of the field. So Coach Ryzen Hoover is talking to him about the ejection of his player, which, you know, we didn't see Coach Ross saying anything to the officials. Uh, it wasn't like he was, looked like he was trying to uh, bring attention to the play. Gilmore still on the ground. He, you, know, you know, he uh, he was trying to walk it off, and Engel uh, made a good play as a as a senior leader and said, "Hey, just take it, just fall down, get yourself fi fixed up." He sprints off the field though. Looks like he's looks like he's going to be okay uh, though. He's got to come out for this play. Second down, seven upcoming for Shakota. Everybody gets a little breather and. In this game, Curtis, it was much needed. Yeah, I needed it. So, uh, I mean, as, <laughs> as a color guy, I needed a breather. So, we'll see. We're rested up here and ready to go for the rest of this ball game. We'll see if Dontier Fisher has some fresh legs in the backfield. Trenton Dan to the far side of the formation. 
Riley Campbell to the near side for Shakota. They give it to Flood. Flood upended in the backfield. Bass with a huge play to blow up uh, the screen, the block there. He knocked uh, the blocker into Flood. Now Flood just didn't have anywhere to go. Bass really didn't make the tackle. He just forced Flood to leave his feet. Good observation yeah. there from Curtis. Yeah, Morgan Jones actually blew that up. My bad, but uh, Bass was there in support. But uh, uh, Morgan Jones did a great job right there blowing up that uh, block. Clock running under six minutes. you got to believe this is four down territory. So you have two downs to pick up seven yards. They give Fisher. Fisher running right side, puts his head down, falls forward. Fisher picks up about five of those seven. It's going to bring up a very important fourth down as the Wildcats move into Stigler territory. Fisher shaking his head. That was a collision at the 48-yard line. Yeah, I think that was Jones up again from the safety position for Bass and Jones coming up. Bass with the initial hit, Jones in support. They always say that football is a contact sport, Curtis. Football is not a contact sport. Dancing is a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. Game on the line. Shakota going to give out. the ball to their man, Fisher. But Stigler, it's almost a smart move there to see what Shakota's going to run on fourth down. With 5.02 to go, Stigler calls a timeout. That's their first of the second half, are you shown that you're going to run off left tackle that first dive? Do you maybe go zone read here running a slant route? What are you doing if you're Shakota? Um, boy, I, you know, I'm a guy that believes you you got to go with the, uh, your thoroughbreds in a play like this. And we've seen this a couple of times in big ball games. And, and almost every time, coach has uh, – uh, when you got a special player like Fisher, you want it in his hands in a, in a meaningful play like this. And, uh, you know, he. so I'm going to find a way to get him the ball if, if I'm calling plays for Shakota right here. The sticks line up just short of the 45-yard line. That's where Shakota has to go. If they, ha they have shown a, a tendency to use him as a decoy, but – this isn't a decoy time, in my opinion. This is, you got to go, you got to go score right here. Fisher lines up in the backfield with Vernon. Vernon, keeper, Vernon, right side, Vernon falls forward, gets the first down. Jake Vernon, the transfer from Eufaula, puts the Shakota Tigers on his back. Huge first down. But once this cha the chains are set, you got to remember the clock is going to run as we hit under five. Clock goes. Yeah, you and don't have a lot of time to celebrate right here. And again, that's uh, another play call by me that shows why I'm in the booth and not on the sidelines. Jake Vernon running right behind Dante Air Fisher. If you're not going to use him running the ball, use that big body to block somebody. Good call there by Zach Ross. Shakota fakes the give to Fisher. Oh, he's looking got him deep. On the post. Got him in. Trenton Dan underthrown. Almost intercepting, undercutting the route. Darren Maines that close to coming up with an interception and ending this game. Yeah, Maines got the turnover on the last uh, uh, last drive and uh, fumble recover on Fisher's uh, fumble and uh, almost made another play right there. Dan had a step on Maines, but a good job by Maines of not giving up on the route. We've seen at times Stigler walk every single person within six, seven yards of the line of scrimmage with the clock stopped at 429. They've kind of backed off a little bit, but everybody's within nine yards. Those safeties with their heels on the 35. Trent, or Jake Vernon with the keeper running left side. Has a few yards before he's hit in the backfield. Brings up third down. This is manageable for Shakota, but you definitely want to pick up some positive yards to stay away from that third and long third and medium range. Shakota not in a big hurry either as Case and Flood comes into the game. Clancy Campbell comes out. Yeah, we've uh, Fisher has not touched the ball. When they've split him out here, 
Uh, they got him in the slot right here. The last time they split him out in the slot, he went on the post route, skinny post. And Play uh, clock's at five. shakota has got to go. Vernon by himself. Looks for Fisher. Throws an out route. Fisher. No, that's Malachi. Harris complete. Harris on his feet. Now is going to be dropped. Are they going to give him the forward progress? They do give him the forward progress. Ball spotted at the 30. 736. He's got to get to the 34. Fourth yeah, down I, and three. I think it's closer to three than four. Uh, you got to pass this ball, I think. Fisher has not touched it. Give Fisher. Fisher running right. Fisher cuts up the field. Fisher with the first down, but there's a flag on the play. Gutsy called to give to Fisher, and we're going to have a holding call. The back's up. The Shakota Wildcats. This goes from fourth and three to fourth and 13. Huge play. Well, it's not over with uh, the playmakers on the outside. Uh, I would probably look for him to go Fisher in the slot right here. It's a play that worked for him earlier. You got to get him outside if you can give the uh, line, can give Vernon time. But uh, Zach, Coach Zach Ross calls in the play. Fourth and 13. They've got to get to the 34 yard line. Stigler is going to call another timeout. 2.44 left to go. And the drama and tension runs high at Ogle Field here in Shakota, Oklahoma. Fourth and 13. This isn't necessarily in your wheelhouse if you're Shakota. What do you employ here, Curtis? Well, uh, they had, they've had a couple of... Uh, they've had a couple of long downs uh, to gain and they've uh, they've run to the trip side they've run uh, go routes on the outside to push the zone deep and run flood under they have run uh, uh, put Fisher in the slot and ran him on a skinny post to get a big conversion on the last touchdown before uh, the end of the first half uh, those are two plays I think you got a chance to go to no reason to throw uh, you know, uh, uh, fake on the screen or anything like that. You're going to have to go to the line, but you got to go to one of two guys. If you're me, I'm going to Fisher, who's lined up on the slot in this side, and you've got uh, Harris in the slot on the uh, far side. That's uh, what I'd look for. Vernon has shown decent mobility, but by no means is he a running quarterback. Do you put pressure on him here? I would come and get him if I'm uh, because of the distance. Vernon in the gun, gets the snap, looking right, eyes rolling back left, not a lot of people, pass, batted and intercepted at the 34-yard line. Stigler with a huge play. Shakota has an opportunity if they can get the ball out. Instead, Stigler comes up with it. Martin Hare, the sophomore. Interception, and that is just about going to do it here. They went to Fisher in the slot, and Dontier Fisher was double covered. Yeah, he uh, ran him on an out route or a little flag route, and uh, it hit his hands. I mean, that's not yeah. an easy catch by any stretch of the imagination. But Fisher was in the air, and it did hit his hands. Great camera work, by the way, by our Bravado Wireless crew. We've seen crazier things. First down and 10. Stigler's going to go to the run. Ingles running right. Ingles still on his feet somehow. So he crosses midfield. That is a hard man to bring down. Bruce Ingle. You got a player down for Shakota right here. I believe on the ground for Shakota is Jonathan McGuire, the senior. It has been senior night here in Shakota, not because it's their last game of the year, but they're taking the opportunity to honor their seniors just in case this is their last game of the year. Yeah, it looks like it's a cramp <clears throat> the way he responded initially. 
Second down and six. If you're Shakota, you definitely can't let Stigler get a first down. Yeah, uh, you got three timeouts left. Well, You're going to have to use those as well. This injury timeout helps you, but the clock's going to go. As soon as the official blows the whistle, the play clock and the game clock will start. Zach Ross not electing to use a timeout so far. Probably clock. would use it after this play. If so, the clock will wind under two minutes if he does not call the timeout. You got to take a chance right here for your Shakota to make a play. This is uh, he goes. Here we go. Clock's running. Clock runs. Play clock runs. They send Gilmore in motion, fake to him, give McClary at the middle. McClary, first down. McClary bounces it to the outside, brought down at the 35-yard line. Zach Ross not electing to use a timeout. Clock continues to run. It's 150. Shakota's defense tried to play admirably a late substitution Shakota will get the man off the field in time Gilmore in motion give to him running left side Gilmore first down Gilmore plenty of space Gilmore he's going to the house put this game on ice Grayson Gilmore Stigler took punch after punch but like a heavyweight champion when push came to shove, the Stigler Panthers came packing. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of firepower uh, by Stigler. Show why they're the fourth-ranked team in Class 3A, going on the road to win a uh, barn burner. Uh, they faced a lot of more adversity tonight than they've seen all season, and they uh, are going to walk away here victorious um, on Senior Night in Shakota. Enrique Juarez puts the extra point up and through. And it is a 56 to 39 lead. Really good job of running right here. Good blocking on the outside and then uh, cuts it back and uh, outraces Harris to the end zone there. Stigler's offense has been some of the best, one of the, the best offense, I'm going to go out there and go ahead and say it, that we've seen so far on the year. Lincoln Christian in the very first game of the year showed some great offensive prowess, but... But it's much different the type of offense, very much quarterback yeah. line oriented. This offense is much more uh, uh, zone, uh, or not zone, I'm sorry, uh, jet sweep uh, and then uh, screen game. A lot like what you'll see with uh, Metro Christian next week versus Beggs. And what a fantastic game in the Class 3A3. This will be when Stigler plays Lincoln Christian. That's going to be a game you want to make sure you get to. Yeah, absolutely. That probably will decide the district title. Uh, Stigler's got the firepower to, to uh, give uh, Lincoln Christian stout defense all kinds of fits, multiple looks. Uh, two-headed monster at the quarterback position. Great playmakers on the outside and, uh, and uh, two really durable running backs in uh, McClary and uh, Engel showing a lot of running uh, power in the second half as well. Malachi Harris with a return for a touchdown already. Fields it at the five. Going to be brought down from behind at the 19-yard line. On the tackle goes Lakin Bass. Disappointed if you're Shakota, you came out, showed a lot of firepower, showed really a, a great desire to win this ball game. Took the lead late third quarter, and uh, and they really uh, had their chances um, in the fourth quarter, and uh, just didn't make the plays that they made most of the game. Uh, hats off to them, uh, much improved team. Uh, really a great improvement since we saw them two weeks ago. Offense has been a lot better. Vernon's been a become a much more solid quarterback for them. Uh, really, some of that's probably trusting him as a quarterback as the season rolls on. But it, getting the ball to playmakers, Dan and uh, 
Um, Malachi Harris on the outside as well, and uh, which uh, you know stacks up for them well. They're still, uh, I would think, inside favorites for the, at least the uh, third position in this district, and uh, you know, and uh, certainly uh, playoffs is a big uh, opportunity for them, and I think that's still within their. Um, in front of them here the rest of the season. Got to stay healthy and they got to keep improving, but they keep improving like this, they're going to they're going to have a good rest of their season. Malachi Harris picks up the first down. It'll be brought down to 35 and if you are Shakota, you've got weapons. As you mentioned, Dan Harris, Fisher, Vernon's growing into his own at the quarterback position. You can be a dangerous team. Just make yourself into the playoffs. You know, you are the the inside track to the three seed, as you said, and then just see what happens on any given Friday in Oklahoma as the deep ball is going to be intercepted at the 40-yard line. Intercepted by Braden Drury, and that will definitely end this one. Puts a nail into the coffin of the Shakota Wildcats, but on the flip side, Stigler remains undefeated. They'll move to 5-0 and on the year. They've, going, they've got a date with Webster. There are only now two undefeated teams in 3A District 3, the Stigler Panthers and the Lincoln Christian Wildcats, who won their game earlier today 61-6 to against Locust Grove. The victory formation for Stigler, that's a kneel down for quarterback Zane Oldham, he began the game and ended it at the quarterback position, but the rotation at the quarterback position worked out and, and just a really an unstoppable effort from the offense of the Stigler Panthers. Gets them the road win and keeps their perfect season intact. Yeah, uh, really uh, was excited to see Stigler. Heard a lot about him. Uh, knew there was a lot of uh, offensive firepower here. They did not disappoint. Uh, great job play calling. Um, good job. Of, you know, a lot of senior leadership on that offensive side. And uh, they're going to be a handful the rest of the season. You get into playoffs and you got one week to prepare for them, uh, they got a chance to make a deep run. Um, and uh, I, I would uh, say from seeing both them and Lincoln Christian uh, so far this season, I'd say Lincoln Christian is probably a little better defensively, and they're a lot better offensively. Um, Stigler is so it, it will be a it will be a great game. We might have to get a hall pass to go to that game uh, late in the season. We're gonna have a good game coming up for you next week. We're traveling to Beggs to watch the number one player in the state of Oklahoma and KJ Daniels. He's gonna be facing the defending 2A state champions in Metro Christian. So that will be a fun game. Meanwhile, Stigler they're going to play Webster. Look to move to three and O in conference and. Shakota, they'll move on and go make the drive down Interstate 40 and play at Seminole. Great matchups all the way around. Shakota growing into their offense. They're really coming along, and then Stigler just looked unstoppable. The only team that could stop the Stigler Panthers was Stigler on this game. Yeah, so uh, Stigler's offense is... Uh uh, one of the best and uh, uh, most complete offenses we've seen that have had the ability to throw vertically. Uh, you really see a mature offense when you got a good screen game. They, they had a lot of uh, uh, offensive plays where they, they faked the screen to one side of the field and set up a screen. That's a, that's a very complex uh, type of play call, and, and they handled that with ease and ran it multiple times tonight. And uh, ran it with power, ran it to with speed to the uh, sweeps to the wide side of the field, and uh, really – distributed the ball well. I mean, it, it not just run pass, but multiple people carrying the ball. So where you look at Fisher and Shakota, Fisher's really the only ball carrier they have other than Vernon off the zone read. They had 10 ball carriers tonight, Stigler. So they're going to be a, a handful. And in a season that uh, can be interrupted in, in a drop of a hat with COVID, ability to have that many playmakers really will uh, benefit them down the road. All right, your Bravado Wireless game of the week here in Chicago, Oklahoma, and it's time for your Bravado Wireless player of the game, Curtis. There's a lot to choose from. Who are you picking? 
boy, this is a tough one. This is there's so many playmakers tonight. I mean, I'm almost uh, you almost want to go with one of the Shakota kids on the loss. Malachi Harris had an incredible game, uh, a lot of electric plays. Uh, you know, uh, Fisher was incredible, but I'm going to go with Darren Maines, uh, the quarterback for uh, Stigler. Uh, made it two huge plays uh, in a ball game that really creates separation. He got the fumble recovery uh, to give them possession uh, off of Fisher turnover late or early in the fourth quarter. Makes a great play on first down with his arm, and then two run plays to get in the end zone to create separation. Put the game to a two score. Uh, lead and uh, threw the ball well, ran the ball well. I think they had one other touchdown in the first half. We <laughs> so many touchdowns. We uh, don't have a stat sheet in front of us. But, uh, Lost count. Uh, he made several plays, pass breakups in uh, in uh, uh, in the secondary and uh, was really all over the field. A lot of great players tonight. I thought these were the two most complete teams we've seen this year. Uh, you know, uh, Gilmore was great uh, offensively for them as well. So, uh, and then Engle really had a quiet first half and. Uh, uh, did a great job in the second half for him. So, great team effort. You see the person this has been, but I'm going to go with Maines. Stigler, with all the weapons that they have, that shows you why they are a true competitor and a true challenger for the top of the 3A. In really, in 3A District 3, but in really all of 3A, a team that can make a deep run come November. Right. We saw with uh, Lincoln Christian, as you think about a preview of this district title race, Lincoln Christian in week zero against Beggs uh, have two very quality quarterbacks. And I think that that's, it cannot be understated in a season like this and the time that we live in in this country when you see our president helicoptered in Marine One to Walter Reed Hospital because he came down with COVID. I mean, that happened today. Uh, you know, the, the strategy of playing two quarterbacks really by both Lincoln Christian and Stigler are going to prepare both of these guys, have them ready to go in case something does happen later in the season. So I like the strategy. It's a new kind of coaching philosophy, something that these guys show a lot of flexibility and a lot of awareness to at the time and the circumstances that we face. Well, as I mentioned, we're going to be in Beggs, Oklahoma next week for the Beggs and Metro Christian game. Right here, wherever you are watching us right now on YouTube, on bravadowireless.com, Tune in at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Pre-game show starting at 6.30. Not tomorrow. Next week. We're, we're going to be off tomorrow. I'm going to take a few days off. But tune in at 7.30 next week. 6.30 next week. I'll get it eventually. And you will be able to see a great game between the Beggs and Metro Christian. Well, our final here, as you see on the screen, 56-39 to 39 in favor of the Stigler Panthers. For Curtis Branch and our entire Bravado Wireless crew, I am Seth Campbell saying so long. We'll see you back here next week. high school sports to the great outdoors and so much more we've got something for you we're a local wireless carrier right here in oklahoma we work for your town in your town but great cell phone signal in rural areas is just scratching the surface we also broadcast live events from all over eastern oklahoma high school football basketball baseball dirt track races livestock shows and community events everything to keep you connected in your community we're also producing original shows like connect outdoors and cooking wild that shines a light on real oklahoman experiences you can find us at bravadowireless.com or you can search for us on facebook or youtube you can even find us on the Oklahoma Sports Network. You can download their app straight to your phone, Apple TV, Smart TV, or Roku. We don't just create for Oklahoma. We are Oklahoma. We're Bravado Wireless, Oklahoma's service provider. This broadcast is a copyright of Bravado Wireless. This game and broadcast should not be reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed without the express written consent of Bravado Wireless and its management.